in God, earth and everything that's in it. Is that right? Uh, including us. And uh, we're certainly very grateful for the mercy is shown towards all of us and it blessed us to be able to assemble on this the first day of a brand new year. Uh, it certainly blessed us. Uh, many years have passed uh, and uh, we didn't know that we would get to the, see the first day of this year, did we? Uh, beginning of last year, we did not know we we're going to live to see the beginning of this year, but we thank God uh, that he has blessed us to be here. Uh, we certainly give always due respect and honor to all the deceased brethren of the past, uh, certainly the apostles and the prophets of old. Uh, we certainly are thankful for them. Uh, we give honor to Pastor Jennings. Uh, who continue to labor and work so hard uh, to get this message to the four corners of the earth. Uh, we thank God and we do greet always uh, the ministering brethren that are here with us and many are absent, uh, but we thank God for them nonetheless. Uh, to the saints of God that are here, uh, we thank God for you. Uh, God has blessed you to travel, some from many, many far parts of the earth to be here. Uh, it's God's mercy alone that we're here. Is that right? Uh, let us never take God's mercy for granted. Uh, for visitors that are here, we thank God for you also. Uh, you're in the right place, and you're going to hear the right thing. And that is uh, the word of God to get you ready for the life to come. Uh, we're going to make a broadcast, as you can see, uh, today, but uh, as we often do, and until Pastor comes, until he comes out, uh, we're going to hear a few words from the ministering brethren that are from other locations. Um, before we get to them, uh, we want you to remember certainly the bereaved families. And there's many of them uh, throughout the body and certainly in other parts of the world. Remember them in prayer. Uh, that God will give them strength and sustain and uphold them. Is that right? Uh, we've heard much messages about the Holy Ghost. Uh, we keep this before you moreover. Uh, do remember the message from last night. Uh, Pastor has taught and went into many things, and I'm glad that is troubling some people and taking away sleep. That's wonderful. Uh, the Holy Ghost is what you must receive in order to make it into the kingdom of God. Until you receive it, you're simply around church people. Just in the company, is that all? Not in the body yet. So we want to encourage those who have not yet received the Holy Ghost to Pursue God with your whole heart, with your whole mind. Is that right? Pursue God. He's there listening. He does not sleep, but he's ready. Is that right? He's ready. So uh, let's pray for them also. My prayer is that once you receive the Holy Ghost, that you continue in the faith after that. Is that right? Because many have received it and they've not continued must learn to continue after you receive it. So in your prayer, ask God to fill them, but not just to fill them, but keep them thereafter. Is that right? All right. We're going to turn to the brethren that are here with us and hear a few words from them until pastor comes out. Minister Ferguson from the Bahamas. Isn't the Lord good? The Lord is extremely good. He is extremely great. And he is very excellent. And being a part of his service is one of the greatest opportunity that any one of us can have. Sharing, participating, working, and being involved in God's work. It gives you a thrill that you can very, very, very hardly find anywhere. And I look at the brother there, I can't remember his name. Brother Cole. Brother Cole. When, we did it, when we interviewed him several years ago and heard him testify last night, he didn't realize or he don't know how he certainly blessed me because he was so timid when we interviewed him and heard him testify with such a force. You know, it says to me that based on what he told us during his interview, that he just wanted to learn and to be a part of what God is doing. And hearing him testify 
last night. That gives me joy to know that there is hope. And for all of the young ministers and brothers who have a desire to minister, just listen to Pastor Jennings, listen to the uh, listen to the brothers, and God will bless you real good. God bless you. Thank God for Bishop Ferguson from the Bahamas. Uh, very faithful, and we thank God for him. And certainly pray for the saints in the Caribbean. Is that right? Uh, we're going to stay in the Caribbean, and I do believe Pastor mentioned that Brother Gary was supposed to teach last night, but the Holy Ghost took his place. Uh, if Brother Gary's here, I'm not sure if he's down here or still with Pastor. It's brother, he's down here? All right, we're going to Jamaica. Brother Gary. Greetings, everyone. We give the highest praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank him for the prophets and the apostles whom have gone before, <laughs> those that are still present. We honor Leader Pastor Jennings and all the ministers that continue to work along with him both here and abroad. Thanking God for this, the truth of God, the only way that is outlined in Scripture for the salvation of our soul. Thank God for where he brought us from. Thank God for this day. Thank him for all allowing us to see this another year. We didn't have to come over, but by his grace and his mercy, he brought us over, you know, to get our wrongs right and to make sure that we are aligned with him. It's a blessing to be in truth and to see what God is doing, you know, to see how the work is growing, how many people, Persons are coming in, you know, just a humbling experience to watch and to see the vision of our leader that he's spoken about coming to pass. You know, I feel very humbled by it and my desire is to continue to hold firm to the unchanging hand of God. You know, I want to continue to work for God from the day I came in and I um, was introduced to Pastor Dennis. My desire was to just follow holiness. My desire was to help in the work, and that is still my desire, to help and to be a good help, and most of all, to save my soul. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing, as Pastor said last night, that I should speak, and I had it in mind, I said, if he called me, I'm going to speak about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hey, hey, Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. You know, so when, when I, he I heard the message last night, I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, so the message was preached. The, the, the Lord spoke to us last night. And I trust that everyone would have heard and take it to heart. When you come to the convocations, if you are without the Holy Ghost, you want to seek God earnestly. You don't want to leave without the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, you want to be strengthened. Hallelujah! I don't believe in coming to con convocation just to see each other. It's good to see one another. But we have to get firmer and firmer in God. Hallelujah! So you that are seeking, you that are seeking, don't give up. Don't let go. The stage is set. We are at the right place. Call to God from the depths of your heart. Hallelujah! Call to him. He is faithful. If you want him, if you need him, you are here. You can receive him. Doesn't matter what you've been going through. Doesn't matter how you've been feeling over the years. Doesn't matter how long it has been. Where there's life, there is hope. So seek God. Trust him. Believe his word. Pray for me. I do the same for us all. In Jesus Christ's name. All right. That's wonderful, is it not? Yeah, well, we're going to keep the Holy Ghost before you because it is so critical. Is that right? My God, do pay attention to the message, all the messages, but in particular when it's dealing with the Holy Ghost because you're going to need that to get in. Is that right? 
All right. Pastor Jennings, we'd like to see all the ushers, all the ushers, every single one of them right now. So please make your way towards his office. All the ushers right now. I do believe he may even still be in the lobby here, but he wants to see all the ushers, all the ushers right now. We're going to continue on to hear from some of the other brethren that are here. Uh, there is a brother uh, I have not uh, heard for some time. Um, he's in Memphis, Tennessee, Minister Martin. Brother Brandon, make your part. <laughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters. Uh, again, we strive to give the highest possible honor that can be given to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We uh, honor the former prophets and apostles. We honor our leader, teacher, and guide, Pastor Jennings. We thank God for all the brethren that labor and word and doctrine. We thank God for you, the body of Christ. I thank God for blessing us to see a new year. Amen. To see a new year is truly a blessing God knows. And to hear of all the testimonies and to hear how the brother I testified and say how his sleep was disturbed because he desired God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Glory! And to hear it, it make me go back to the month of July in 2008. And I really went after God and started asking him to give me that blessed gift. I, I used to always see how when the spirit fell, this is when I used to be in the Mobile, Alabama temple, and to see how God spoke through different people and different brethren and different sisters and I used to look at it like it was something that was so far off. And I used to look at myself and say, how can I ever, how can that ever be me? But if you believe, if you believe, yeah, without faith it's impossible to please God. I really believe that God can fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I, I, I want it all of our church family to receive it, but I, I got pretty stingy when it came to myself. I believe in one place it says, save yourself. Man, I remember July 16th, 2008, and we was in prayer service on a Wednesday night and just start calling on God and calling on God and calling on God. And I thank God for the teaching. It's so important to have good teaching because I stammered first and I remember when I heard it and I asked God turn the stammer over and that's based upon the teaching that we was on the receiving end of and God out of his mercy took that stammering lip or that cloven tongue and calls for another language to come out and I can testify and say it's not because I deserve it I believe all of us that call on God and receive the Holy Ghost can say it's not because we deserve it. It's because of the mercy. It's because of the mercy of God. So we thank God. I thank God for this good, wholesome teaching. Thank God for hearing all the testimonies and we encourage everyone that's seeking God for the Holy Ghost that you can receive it. And I say by faith, my God, with the help of God, you will receive it. You in the right place. So please be prayerful for us because I thank God that he filled us then. And I thank God that uh, he ain't took it away from us yet. And I'm, I'm thankful to God because he filled us with it. And I want to die with it. Hurry up. Glory to God. I want to die with it. Hallelujah. Glory. I want to die with it and be counted worthy to be a partaker of the first resurrection. I pray my strength in the Lord.
Thank God for our brother from Memphis, Tennessee. We're going to hear from one other brother before we move on further with the service. And uh, we're going to hear from our secretary tonight, uh, Minister Etheridge, if he's down here. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Tonight we begin, we greet you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the prophets and the apostles, and certainly to Pastor Jennings, our present day leader, we thank God for him, and to all the ministers and the brothers and sisters, we thank God for his goodness to us. As you've been hearing the same refrain as we've been in this conference and from our pastor teaching on Sunday about the importance of the Holy Ghost, what you will understand is that the Holy Ghost makes the difference. You can hear somebody's testimony. You can see people speak in tongue. But the Holy Ghost is going to make the difference in your life. So don't be discouraged because the Lord has given you through our pastor and through these ministers here the same refrain. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Coming to see you is good. That's a blessing. I'm glad to see all of you. But I need more Holy Ghost. And I'm thanking the Lord for this message that is uncompromising, keeping God before us, keeping the lessons of God before us. If you notice the way you're being taught, when we come into the house of God, Jesus Christ is the main attraction. If you pay attention, if you listen, you will understand that we are pushing Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That goes to show you, as Elder King prayed in the 1990s when I first was hearing Pastor Jennings preach, Bishop King was praying on the broadcast and Bishop King said, though many despise and reject, he said, thank God the truth cannot be hid. And as many hate the fact that we are pushing Jesus Christ. Thank God that the truth cannot be hid. And I appreciate where we are in the Lord, but there's much land that is remaining to be possessed. And I don't want God to cut me off where I don't go into that goodly land. I want to be sure about my salvation and I want to go where God leads him. I'm thankful to be on the truth of God train. I've come too far to get off the train and go hitchhiking. May the Lord bless you. All right, thank God for the words coming from Minister Etheridge. Uh, without question, if Brother John is there in the back uh, controlling the sound, uh, Brother John from uh, Scott Lesk Productions, can you meet Pastor Jennings, please, in the lobby right away? Uh, again, uh, please pay attention to the words you're hearing from the ministers, moreover. Uh, it's so much, and uh, it's, it's the same message as Minister Etheridge just said. It's the same sound, is that right? The same refrain about receiving the Holy Ghost. Please pay attention to that. My God, I'm reminded of a scripture that says, Lift up your head, O ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Is that right? Uh, and that, the gate's referring to people, where people walk and move back and forth. Is that right? So we have to look to God that he may fill us. Is that right? I have to repent because pastor's not quite ready. Uh, we're going to call upon Deacon Jennings. Greetings, everyone. We're grateful and thankful for being in the land of the living. We thank God for our pastor, our teacher, leader and guide, thinking about 45, 46 years ago, coming into this knowledge, still here. When you fast speed, 20, 22, the thing that comes to my mind is all the millions, 
possibly billions of people that have died from Adam on up to now all have to stand before God in judgment. Those that are left alive, you and I have to stand before God in judgment. What will he say about you? Will you be able to enter in freely or will you be cast aside on the other side? We thank God for our pastor, our teacher, our leader and guide that God has chosen him for this cause and this purpose. Wonderful. Many, many don't like that. <laughs> many don't like that. Coming to the understanding of this was God's will. God himself had to open up your understanding to hear this truth. We were somewhat apprehensive when we first heard it. Ain't that the truth? We're grateful. I thank God for my pastor, my teacher, my leader, and God, my brother. Thanking God for him talking to me, directing me, guiding me, even in error. He was able to bring me to the knowledge of the truth, and I thank God for him. Being able to call me at a point of death that God showed him, but I'm still alive to talk about it. And we're grateful for being in this vision, being able to understand and appreciate holiness. Without it, no man can see the Lord. We thank God for you, those that have listened and been obedient to the sound of truth. That's why you're here. For what? Seeing and being able to exist in eternity. Remember the word that you have heard from our pastor, teacher, leader, and God. Because Satan is going to try to pull you back to where you were. Keep God in front of you. Peace be unto you. All right. Thank God for those words coming from... Uh from Deacon Jennings, uh, Elder Jennings, we thank God for him always. Continue to remember him in prayer as he labors in Minnesota and throughout other parts of the Midwest. We'd just like to remind you that you're listening to and watching the Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program coming to you from this, the international headquarters of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. We're located at 5105 North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right here in the United States of America, where the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings is our leader, teacher, guide, and he is our general overseer. You're also listening to and watching a pre-recorded program for those who are not watching live. It's our 33rd, I believe, men's and 20, 35th women's holy convocation. All of this is being celebrated on this, the first day of a brand new year, the year 20 and 22, a year in services. Uh, many are gathered here from throughout the world and we are certainly grateful for them and grateful for you that are watching. And we'd just also like to remind you that this program is on the air and not for entertainment by no means. It is uh, unscripted and certainly commercial free and driven by the Holy Ghost. I got it. This time we're going to present on to you our leader, teacher, guide. He's the messenger and ambassador of the Almighty God, the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. Once again, we bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. By all means, there is no God greater than him. We thank the Lord this evening for bringing us into another new year. Yes. By God's mercy. God have been good to us. We have been enjoying this conference as always. Those that can fit here in the lower auditorium and the many that's in the overflow auditorium in the gymnasium. 
I greet all of my beloved brothers and sisters internationally who desire to be here and are not. Uh, we do hope that God will continue to make provisions for us where he rid us of this pest, this virus. And that's what it is. It's a pest. Where our brothers and sisters that is abroad can be able to come here in America and their borders are open as well. God has given us much, much, much progress. And I must say, the numbers are still coming in from around the world, those that are baptized. Now, before I read this, let me just make a few announcements. I know many of you get happy when service is going on and may some really have the Holy Ghost. But I want everybody to listen because the important thing is everybody be on the receiving end of the message. So you that may get in the spirit and get happy speaking in tongue, we thank God for that. I, I, and I'm laying this foundation for every place. When it's time for the minister to teach, you have two forms of edification. When one speak in tongue and there's no interpreter, they edify themselves. Hear, hear, hear me now, hear me good. Then you have edification in the form of exhortation and in doctrine and in word preaching the gospel. So I want all my Holy Ghost filled brothers and sisters to hear me good. We don't want to encourage you to quench the spirit. We never will. But if the Lord is dealing with you in a bountiful manner, so those around you, in front of you, on the side of you, in back of you, so they can hear what God wants for everybody to be edified, Then let the person stay in the spirit, but we're going to have an usher or ushers. Just gently tell them, you know, we're going to ask you to come on out and come in that room over there. You can call it the prayer room if you like. <laughs> but we're going to gently ask them to come on out and let you be in another room, you can carry on in there. So everybody else, hear me good, can be edified. Now, if it's the Holy Ghost, I don't have the authority to tell you be quiet because that's not God's order. But if you're happy, then I have to use good judgment so everybody, including whoever's around you, can hear the word of the Lord. So, to you that may have a heavy anointing, brother or sister, heavy anointing, glory to God. Regardless of what location, when it's time for the minister to preach, and if that anointing 
keep going and keep going until people cannot receive the message from the pulpit. <laughs> then I have to be wise in my assessment. We're not going to quench your spirit. So we take God, we're not going to tell you to stop. We're going to tell you carry on. Help yourself. But, I said, we just going to have one of the brothers or sisters, whoever it may be, to kind of just move you to another room. So everybody can hear. God word. Because if there is no interpreter, no one is being edified but you. And I don't care how often you speak in tongue, if the Spirit is on you so much, so often, so long, that you cannot get the teaching. In you, you're going to go to hell after you're done speaking in tongues. You didn't know that? He that hath an ear, let him hear. Do you hear this in the book of Revelation? In Revelation chapter 2 and at verse 7. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith. Unto the church. Now, the church is not one member but many. So when one is in the spirit speaking in tongues, the spirit ain't talking to the church. The spirit is dealing with that one. But if the spirit step in and all of a sudden there's an interpreter to interpret what that tongue is saying, now the spirit is talking to the church. But until there's an interpreter, the spirit edify that one. But even that one cannot be saved by speaking in tongue only. That's right. Because you got to hear. Yeah. How can you hear without a preacher? Right. How can he preach except he be sent? That's right. So I want all the ministers, when you get up, the minister, address that openly. We say this, Paul said, I say this not to condemn you, but to set all things in order. So if the individuals around you cannot hear the word, we're not putting you out the church. We're just going, you know, just, just ease you to another location where you, where God can have his way. But uh, out of all the way having, whatever way that's taking place, without this, you can't be saved. Now, being able to separate God using you versus integrating or mixing your emotions within the using of God. My brother made an excellent example today. You know, a lot of folk, when they, what we call shout, which is really holy dancing. You know, some fellas, though, they got to close their eyes. You see them columns? Talk back to me. I said, do you see them columns? Now, if you want to close your eyes and be happy, fine. But let us understand these columns. It's still in them. They're not moving. So sometimes we feel as though that we have to do something and we don't. 
So, if I'm in the spirit, in my mind, I got to close my eyes, you know, because that's what I think sometimes. But you haven't broken no law rejoicing with your eyes open. That don't mean you're in the flesh. That means you want to see where you're going with the spirit. It's written, blessed are your eyes, for they see. Are you listening to the older man? In other words, the anointing, hear me good, is not foolish. God himself confines himself to his own word. Not even God will go outside of his word to perform his own will because he tells us to believe on him as the scripture have said. So we have to believe on him according to what he said. So if anybody just gently, you know, just usher you out, don't get offended. They're doing that because they want others around to hear the word of the Lord. Do we get an understanding? Amen. Amen. The whole purpose of the word of God is that we may feast, eat, and then look at ourselves into the biblical mirror of truth. But even if you're in the spirit and I can't grasp what my ears need to hear, then I cannot move forward. That's right. You may be in the spirit and I want that spirit that you have. So if I want that spirit that you have and yet I can't hear what the spirit is saying to the church, then good judgment, let's just move them to another room. And let the Lord deal with them in the upper room. Or the side room. Or the room somewhere else. Because when the Holy Ghost is done, you got to hear yeah. preaching. Now, moving of the Holy Ghost operation of God. Sometimes we may feel as though that if the Holy Ghost is dealing with you, sometimes the Holy Ghost will move on you and make you speak loudly. And then you have those who are aware that there are people around. Holy Ghost still deal with them, but they may lower their voice and Amen. God may deal with them, just Amen. them. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Be able to separate God dealing with you from your personal emotion. That you don't get caught up in your emotion and then all of a sudden the spirits stop and you keep going. When the spirit stop and you keep going, you have departed from the spirit of truth and now you have inhabited the spirit of error. And the apostle says, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Do we have an understanding? So regardless of what temple in America or abroad, but you have some people that do speak in tongue much. They have the gift of tongues. Speak in tongue much. When it's time for the preaching, and you're speaking in tongue through the whole message, when are you going to eat gospel? Because I don't care how much you speak in tongue, you got to be taught to live holy with that tongue or you're going to go to hell with the tongue.
Pastor Paul said, I speak in tongue more than they all, more than the Corinthian church. But then he said, I must bring myself under subjection, lest I also cast away. be cast away. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So if you get happy, wonderful. But be able to distinguish within yourself the moving of God versus you getting happy about God moving you. Did you hear what I just said? The moving of God and you getting happy about God moving you until your emotions get caught up in your happiness and now you extend what God did not extend. When God stopped, you stop. When God knock off, you knock off. That way you don't get in self. You don't get in the flesh. And you don't run ahead of the spirit, but you follow. The Bible talk about following on to know the Lord. Is that all right? All right, let me upset my 2022 viewers. God done some good things in 2021. I believe in 2020, where's Double D? Gymnasium. All right. I know in, let me see, COVID hit, what was it, 2020, correct? Anyway, <laughs> when COVID hit, we had to stop traveling March of that year because everything else in the country shut down. But even though it hit, 4,000 and over 400 souls was baptized that year without traveling. So... Here we are, and the numbers are not even final. They're still coming in from different locations around the world. In America, we baptized 4,175. Africa, 1,847. Jamaica, 244. In the and area, other areas of the Caribbean, 236. In the United Kingdom, 113. Canada, 116. Europe, 78. In Belize. 55, Australia, uh, 28, Mauritius and Rodriguez, 14, in Dubai, 13, New Zealand, 11, India, uh, 46. So far, 6,976 souls were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Six thousand nine hundred seventy six souls, and the numbers are still coming in for 2021. It's not finished yet. Glory to God, only God can pull off something like this. Now, let me say to all my viewers, our international youth conference will be April 15th, April 16th, April 17th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This year, it will be held in Greensboro, North Carolina. If the main auditorium was done, we would hold it in the main auditorium because we can get close to 3,000. 
Uh, but we don't have no room. Our lower auditorium, we don't have no room. The gymnasium, you don't have much room there. So we wanted to get a convention center that holds anywhere from two to 3,000, if not more. So our youth conference for 2022 will be in Greensboro, North Carolina, April 15th through the 17th. 3121 Westgate City Boulevard, Greensboro, North Carolina, at the Sheraton Greensboro Hotel, the convention center there. The broadcast will be promoting and announcing this meeting all around the world. I advise you to start making plans now. Not after a while, like now. And I believe one scripture says, now is the acceptable time. And now is the day of salvation. Our minister's meeting will take place there. Uh, all of our necessary business meetings will take place there as well. To my way of holding this transport team, all of you wasn't in the meeting today as you were scheduled. So we will be having a meeting during a youth conference in Greensboro. All members of the way of holding this transport team, it is mandatory that you be there, check your emails. Our secretary of the new transport team will be emailing you time and place. There while we're in Greensboro, we're starting, God be our helper, a church business, a tractor trailer business, tractor trailer company. And we putting all the components together. I met with my attorney. Our paperwork is practically done. Our doc numbers and all of that. And uh, we'll be able to get the variations of trucks and them that require CDLs, them that don't require CDLs. We have churches around America and abroad, which enable us also to set up business around the country and abroad. I, I, I just don't have a vision for spiritual things. I have a vision for natural things. Hey. Amen. Hey. The numerous of talent that God has put in the church, and we want to work for God in every capacity. So we want to open up our own mechanic shop, our diesel mechanic shops, where all of our buses can be serviced and all our... Uh, trucks can be serviced, and I have our own dispatch, dispatchers and contract negotiators, everything that it takes to get the way of holding this transport moving. Also, my brothers and sisters who major in agricultural, you know, farming, I'm a spiritual farmer. I know how to plant the word in you and Turn your soil over. Thank God and inject God's word that your heart may be fertile. I know how to eat an apple. But I don't know all what it takes to grow it other than putting the seed in the ground. And I don't know what time of day to plant it. and What time of year, you know, because the moon and the tide have a lot to do with it. And a farmer know when to plant, he know what soil is good for planting, and he know what soil is not good for planting. So you that know about planting, I want to have a meeting with all of those brothers and sisters that have skill in farming. We have over 33 acres of land that was given to us some years ago in Georgia. We want to grow our own produce. We are organizing to have our own trunking company, and we just don't want to carry merchandise for others. Are you listening? Am I right, Frank? We want to grow our own produce. Real estate is my era expertise. So in each state, we want to buy our own property so we can open up our own stores, stock our shelves with our own produce. Tie in with 
business acquaintances that produce good wholesome meat, like the Amish, like the Jewish community, and the Islamic community. I'm not there to discuss religion. I'm there to buy some meat. I want to say, well, why them, Pastor Jennings? Because they don't use preservatives and all that hormones and your child go to bed and only three feet by that weekend, he's ready to be drafted as an NBA player. Years ago, you didn't hear about cancer the way you do now. So we want to have our wholesome food. Wholesome food that our brothers and sisters can eat healthy. You know, years ago, they would cook greens and keep using the same bacon grease over and over. They'll pull it out of a pan and put it in a cup or something, let it sit there. Get that old fat back, scoop it back up, throw it back in there again. We want our, we're feeding you healthy spiritually. But we also want to feed you so you can be healthy naturally. So each area of business that we want to venture out for, we get our trucks, produce, real estate. We open our own restaurants. Our own bakery. I want to say you think too big. No, you think too small. <laughs> when I read the scriptures, Israel did not have to go outside of Israel to do anything. Israel was able to do what they had to do within Israel. Many say, Pastor Jennings, I, I want to help. I want to work for God. All right. Then uh, we got some talented people all across the country. And if you want to be a part of this great move of God that is taking place, you get on board the Truth of God train and let's roll our sleeves up old school way. And work. Not just talk it. Work. Glory to God, we got a mind to work. That way, that bring in more resources into the church and give us more financial flexibility to set up churches quicker, broader. I want it to be so we don't have to get a loan from no lending institution. We go in the area, I can call the financial secretary. Listen, there's a church here. They want 150000 for us. Can I do it? Yes. Send the check. Let's buy it cash, no mortgage. That way they can glorify God with no mortgage. Sometime now, we're able to buy a building. You know, because we negotiate. And anyone that's been around me know I, I'm a negotiator. I'm not intimidated by numbers. When you tell me I would like to, I'm selling this place for 500000 I'm like, okay. I know you ain't getting it out of us. <laughs> and I'm going to wrangle with you. And if you don't agree, then I say, fine, I go elsewhere. Because I have done it. So we have a very broad vision for the church, the progress and the success of the church, our own schools. Amen. That our children may be properly educated. Now, I don't mean homeschool children, and yet the one that's doing the homeschooling 
don't have the proper education themselves. If you go going to homeschool your children and they're in 11th grade and the homeschooler only have a middle school understanding of mathematics, then how can you properly contribute to the development of the mathematical mind of your son and daughter on the right level in the manner they should be educated. Your intentions may be good, but you are harming them more than helping them. So we have teachers, brothers and sisters. And we would love to have our own school, the Truth of God Academy. God has given me a vision. For some, they're intimidated by it. But how do you think corporations function? Years ago, have you, you remember Woolworths, don't you? Yeah. Mr. Woolworths, when he got started, he started off with a dime store. Until he expanded and expanded and expanded, and then he was all across the country. I thought he closed down forever until I went to Europe. I saw Woolworths all over Europe. So I believe God has given us a divine skill. Wherever we go in the world, souls come. I would love to be able not only to open up churches, but start businesses where the unemployed in the church can be employed. Yeah. Amen. Give me the book of Habakkuk. So as the numbers continue to come in, we're at 6,967. And uh, God knows that made my heart feel good. Because the results of the truth of God just keep getting larger. I saw almost 7,000 souls. Almost 7,000 souls in one year. Don't tell me that this is a, a farce, a fluke. It is the Lord's doing. And may not like it, but it's unheard of anywhere. It's not Pastor Jennings, it's God's doing. And it's marvelous in all of our eyes. All right, get this. In the book of Rebekah, chapter 2, when we start at verse 1. Follow me. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. You know, you want to see what God is saying. And that's the problem through the years. We have heard everything but what God said. We always should want to see what God is saying. Have a listening ear. That's right. Ear try words as mouth do meats. When the word of God is preached, when you come to God's house, you come obeying the words of Brother Solomon, That's right. who spake by God's permission and said in the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes, Keep thy foot. Keep thine foot when thou goest to the house of God and what did God instruct us through Solomon to do and be more ready to hear be what more ready to hear than to do what than to give the sacrifice of fools why for they consider not that they do evil I want you to hear this when you come to God's house keep your foot pay attention be observant. That's right. Glory to God. That way when you hear the word of God, they give you clear opportunity for self-examination and self-evaluation. 
Amen. That's right. Our minds are too crowded with nothing. When we're here, many times we're not here when we are here. That's right. And then you rob yourself the opportunity of getting what God wants you to have because you're in the building, but you're not in the Word. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Do what? In the book of 2nd Esther 14 and verse 14. Let go from Let the go. mortal thoughts. Turn loose. That's right. Get rid of. That's right. The thoughts of mortality. Cast away the burdens of Pastor Paul of said it this way. They that are after the flesh, they do, they do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, to be carnal minded to be fleshy minded to be mortal minded is death. death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And peace. I'd rather have peace than have wealth. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Let your mind go. This is the first message for the new year. Yeah. Everybody Hallelujah. come back to Bible. That's right. Bring your mind back. Bring your heart back. That's right. Bring your will back. Backslider, bring yourself back. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. The Holy Ghost said. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Don't ever approach God's word with your personal logic. That's right. The God of heaven declared, my thoughts is not your thoughts. That's right. Neither is my way your way. He showed us the vast difference. And that said, as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts and my way from your way. Logic, personal feeling, personal views, I don't get along with God. No. That's why some folk get offended when I tell them your personal views don't mean nothing to me. For it to mean something to me, it first got to mean something to God. That's right. And I know it ain't going to mean nothing to God, so I'm, it's going to remain. It ain't going to mean nothing to me. <laughs> That's right. Or it's say God, because the first thing I want to know, what did God say? That's right. The greatest day of our life is when God interfered with it. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. The greatest day of your life, glory to God, was when God interfered with it. That's right. The interfering of life doesn't always feel good to the one that God is interfering with. And sometimes the one don't understand what is God doing and why is he doing it? That's right. Sometimes God got to interfere with your life and bring pain. That's right. Or it take God just to bring you to him. Yeah. Don't ever use the term describing God. He's trying to get your attention. That's an insult to him. He can't be called the almighty then he got to try to pull something off. God wants your attention. He's getting it. That's right. And he's going to do it by any means that pleases him. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? He's going to do it by any means that please him. It don't have to please you. It pleases him. So many of us is here because God brought some pain. That's right. Am I right, I said? Sometimes that pain hit in our personal life. Amen. Wasn't praying, wasn't fasting, wasn't serving God until the right pain hit you. When the right pain hit you, you said something that you never thought you would have said. Oh, Lord. Or Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He knew how hard to hit you. He knew what to hit. And he knew who to hit. 
your position, your money, your wealth, your property, your looks, that don't mean nothing to God because you was born without it and you're dying without it. That's right. For some to pray, wife had to die. For some to pray, son had to get sick. For some to pray, he smote your wound, had a miscarriage. For some to pray, you had a car wreck. You were laying there, couldn't move. Heard everything, thank God, the doctors were saying over you. You heard them. You wanted to say something and couldn't. Heard the doctor say, it won't be long now. Doctor, there's it, no more we can do. You heard that one doctor say, only a higher power can help him now. Can't speak, can't move. But before you know it, tears rolling down your eyes and you can't even open them. Can't move your mouth. But within, you start talking to heaven. Start repenting within. In many cases, that accident, that condition, was your turning point. Are you listening? Pastor Paul was an injurist. Before he was turned to an apostle, he was a murderer. Blasphemer. Going into your house, hailing men and women. But Brother Paul said, I obtained mercy. Light shine from heaven. Hallelujah. Do you know all of us experience that heavenly light? Someone said, Pastor Dennis, I had no light shine from heaven. Oh, yes, you did. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when the word of God comes, that's that light shine from heaven. And it's above the brightness of the sun because the word is above God's creation. That's right. Light came in the form of divine information. Make you start praying. Start making decisions about yourself that you never thought you would make. You thought you were so attached to that second husband and attached to that second wife and you couldn't live without them. Now you start deciding and this ain't worth it. See yourself getting older. You start getting exhausted with the same foolish party, worthless life. Get tired of the same old drab life of clubbing. Start losing that taste for alcohol. Start getting too tired to strike the match. Smoking get boring to you. Friends is calling you. Where are you? I guess don't feel like going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't feel like going. What? God is dealing with you. That's right. That's right. Everybody has an appointed time. It is written, I wait for my change to come. But is that my appointed time? That's right. You coming to the knowledge of the truth, don't get frustrated with your family because they didn't come. You wasn't always in it. You try to show your wife, don't argue with her because she don't see it. You didn't always see it. That's right. You have an argument with your children or with your husband and say, oh, you mean to tell me you blind? Yes, they're blind. You was once blind. It will come a time, God willing in their life, blessed are your eyes. 
for they see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Here, chapter verse again. Still in 2nd Esther 14 and verse 14. Turn loose your carnal mind. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. Get rid of. That's right. The weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Yeah. Hallelujah. You come in God's house unload. That's it. Hallelujah. Bible says set aside the thoughts that's most heavy. Most heavy. The New Testament says it this way. Cast your cares upon him. That's right. For he cares for, care for you. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. That's right. Because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why Hallelujah. when you come to the house of God, keeping your foot, Keep paying foot. attention so you can digest what's for you. That's right. It equips you how to give God service. That's right. That's the right. same vicious cycle. 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And you in the same rut, spinning your wheels yeah. and going nowhere. It's the treadmill effect. You got a treadmill in your house, you ain't going nowhere. But you're running. But you ain't going nowhere. You don't want the treadmill effect when you come to church. You want to run in the way of God's commandments. Because there's a heart enlargement. It is written, I run in the way of thy commandments because thou hast enlarged my heart. My heart. Hold it. Now, if the Bible says thou hast enlarged my heart, the purpose of heart enlargement is that the heart may be able to hold more of the emotions of God. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? When you start out in God, I mean, I love the truth like you should. But after you walk a while, yeah. Lord, hallelujah, and serve them a while. Sometimes when we just come into the knowledge of the truth, we're overzealous, overrighteous. We are quick to say, I love the truth, but yet don't understand what we're talking. That's right. Because we don't know what all this truth consists of. So it takes time. And in time, when your understanding come open, your heart goes through enlargement. That way you can hold more love for God's word. That's right. And now 10 years later, you can express love for the word that you couldn't two years ago. That's right. What happened? My heart got enlarged. That's right. Hallelujah. I got more room now. Hallelujah. I can feel the presence of God in me more now. Hallelujah. What? My heart got enlarged. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Back in Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 1. Tell you what? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep it. That's right. Pay attention. That's right. Stop looking at anybody. Just look at you. Amen. You know, when many of the apostolic churches, a sinner come in who don't know the truth, may got lipstick on, pants on, sometimes they shun her. Benediction is given, they won't even speak to her as if they more holy than thou. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, isn't we the church? Uh, aren't we greater? Because the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible didn't say you are. No. It ain't say you're greater. No. It says, Greater is he that's, that's in you. In you. So in the you. one that's in you is God. That's right. He's the great God. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the sin in yourself. Yeah. Look at what you're struggling with. Oh, yes. Look at what you're trying to overcome. Yeah. And when you do that, get out of your judgment seat. That's right. Sit in right. judgment on yourself. That's right. 
ask God to enlarge your heart. That's right. Right now, your heart is so small, you don't have the love for the truth like you should, but when that heart is enlarged, yeah. the Bible said they receive not the love of the truth. Of the truth. Of the the truth. Bible didn't say they didn't hear it. It said they didn't receive the love, the love of it. The love of the truth. So a lot of folk like the truth. Yes. They don't love the truth. Love it. I want to say, well, Pastor Jim, this is so hard. Oh, yeah, it's some hard things in here. But I love it. Oh, yes. I couldn't always say I love it. But you get to a point in God, you can say, I love it. Love it. It's hurting me, but I love it. That's right. It's condemning me, but I love it. That's right. It's beating me down, but I love it. That's right. It brings me pain, yes, but I love it. That's right. Glory to God, glory to God. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep it. Pay attention. That's it. Foot represent movement. That's right. Keep thy foot mean pay attention. Be observant. That's right. When you come to God's house and be more, more ready to more, hear. More ready to hear. Not ready to sit and look at who's doing what, how they doing it. Be more ready to hear. Be more ready to hear. Then to do what? Then to give the sacrifice of food. Hold it. Sacrifice of fools. fools. Foolish service. Yeah. You know, when you're making a sacrifice, you're rendering to God service. service. And when you give a sacrifice of fools, you're offering God foolish service. That's right. The type of service that he get no pleasure in. That's right. Now, that's why it's important to hear the word of God that you may know how to offer God service, service. that gives him pleasure, gives him joy. Glory to God, makes God happy. That's right. But when you give the sacrifice of fools, fools. God hate what you're doing. That's right. Even if you love it, God hate it. Yeah. Even if you think it's right, God hate it. That's right. The whole purpose, I want you to hear me good. The whole purpose of church is to please God. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of church. Because if I please God, then I can be saved. That's right. That's right. Until the church of Jesus Christ come line up 100% with wanting to give God all pleasure. pleasure. All pleasure. Now, if we don't be willing to give God all pleasure, we're offering the sacrifice the of fools. And we don't even consider the evil that we're doing. That's right. All right, go back to Habakkuk now. Listen at this. Back in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. Follow me. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Yes. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. I want to see what the Lord is saying. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. <laughs> hmm. I have to know how to respond. When I am reproved. When I am reproved. You know, reproof is part of your walk in God. That's right. When you're too big and your position you think is too high, hmm. that you're above reproof, you're a fool. That's a fool. Everybody that got in mind to be right with God is partaker of chastisement. For whom the Lord loveth, he Do you hear? Do you hear the Apostle Paul? In Hebrews chapter 12, we'll start at verse 5. Whom, listen at this. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Wait a minute. You was being exalted, but you got absent-minded about it. That's right. You forgot. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. You forgot the teaching. As unto children, my son. That was being brought to you, children. Children. Huh? My son. My son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. What else? Nor faint when thou art rebuked you of know, him. You know, some folk can't take it. The moment <laughs> you lay right. him out, they fall out and stay out of church and don't come to about 10 years later. That's true. Can't take it. That's right. I'd rather take chastisement now than take it when Jesus comes. Amen. Any chastisement that God had for me. All right, Lord, come on. That's right. Bring it on now. That's right. Don't go wait until I stand before you because then I'm in trouble. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. You know, when my father chastised me, I despised it. Yeah. 
but it's a contributing factor to my development now. Amen. I wasn't raised in a time where there was time out in a corner. <laughs> I don't know what that is. If I was time out in the corner, I was in that corner rubbing myself because that belt done some pain. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost said, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. No what? No faint. Don't fall out. When thou art rebuked of him. How do God rebuke us? Through and by his word being preached. That's right. All of us got improvements to make and got some coming up to do. Oh, yes. So walking around, rolling your <laughs> eyes, blowing your nostrils, frowning up your lips, ain't going to mean nothing to God. No. You might as well come on and do what God say do or go to hell. That's right. And, and ain't no other alternative. <laughs> Amen. In God. Amen. Heaven to hell. That's it. Talked to a sister I met for the first time the night I was coming down and in the uh, administration building, and she saw me. She said, Pastor Jennings. I shook her hand. She introduced herself. She told me where she was from. I can't remember where she was from. She said, uh, you need to come open up a church there. She said, and she put herself in it. She said, there's a lot of us heathens there. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You know, when you're honest, you'll look at yourself and say, yeah, I'm a heathen. <laughs> That's right. Everything in here got some heathenistic ways in them. That's right. Don't think just the sinner got heathenness. The church folk church got folk. heathenistic ways in. That's, That's right. why you need a hard gospel to pound on the head of that church brother and sister. That's right. To beat the heathen under subjection. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? For whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth. Do you hear it? In Hebrews 12, now at verse 6. How can you be a proper parent and never chastise your children? That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost speaks plain here. For whom the Lord loveth, whom the Lord loved, he chased, he chased, and scourges and scourge every son, every son, whom he received. Everyone he received, they're gonna get a beating. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Is that plain? Amen. He scourged how much? And scourges every son, whom he received. You might as well. Someone say, "Well, I ain't got mine yet. Stick around. Stick around." Pastor, if I leave church, that's fine. Then you get your beating when he come. That's right. And when he come, you won't be able to repent for that beating. No. If you're wise, get your beating now. That's right. Because if you get it when he come, yeah. he going to put you in the eternal lake of fire. If he endure chastening, let God beat you now. That's right. Don't get mad at me because you hear us preaching against earrings and cigarettes and liquor and lipstick and fake hair and men wearing dresses and women wearing pants, right. prostitution, gang bang and murder, rape. Don't get mad with me because you're guilty. Amen. Take your chastisement now. That's right. That's right. So we'll take God and when you take your medicine now, you have turned from your ways. Oh, yes. You may not turn overnight. I often think of the sister, we was on Frankfurt Avenue. When we started our telecast, we had a white couple that came in from Johannesburg, South Africa. And during that time, Mandela was living. And they came right where the apartheid was at its height. Yeah. And the brother's name was Brian. And Brian was a bouncer in a club and a pure premium 93 octane bigot. He said he was in America on a green card, fishing through the television, saw us one Sunday morning, this bigot. Then he said he figured he'd come to church and check it out, see what it's about, seeing what all these blanketed blanks was doing. <laughs> Brian and his girlfriend, Christine, came in, big white brother, barbell boy. Before you know it, God start beating on Brian. Yeah. God penetrated them muscles oh, yeah. and went right to his heart. When he asked who wanted to be baptized, the hand went up of the bigot. Went down in water. 
After we baptized him, he came to me after service. He said, I got a confession to me. He said, my name is Brian. I'm from Johannesburg. And I was a bouncer in the club. And he told me straight up, I mean no disrespect, but where I'm from, I hate it in words. <laughs> he was crying while he was telling me. He said, while you was preaching, I felt something leaped in me that I never experienced in my life. <laughs> then next thing I know, he grabbed me and embraced me. He said, I love you. God knows I love you. He said, I love you. Amen. It doesn't matter what you are. That's right. Nobody is tougher than the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whom the Lord loved, he chased. Chased. And scorned. Every son. Everybody. Whom he receiveth. If you want God to receive you, yeah. prepare yourself to get whipped. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take God. Prepare yourself for it. That's right. The Lord beat Brian. Yeah. He was a happy man. And his girlfriend kept coming to church with pantsuits on every single week. Faithful. The mothers went to her. I said, leave her alone. I said, don't you do God's job. Let God deal with her. You leave her alone. Amen. I told the mothers, don't you ever bother a sinner when they walk in this door about what they got on. Because if they're going to take it off just to make you shut up and then go out there and put it back on, what profit is it? Yeah. Let God do it. That's right. We're gonna take God, when God do it, they take it off because conviction hit the heart. That's right. They may struggle with it, but they're going to keep trying because the heart is being dealt with. That's right. Christine was coming. I preach against parents and children. Every type of thing I preach against that had to do with ungodly apparel, she was wearing. And she would say, Amen. <laughs> preach against lipstick, she said, Preach it, Pastor Jim. <laughs> preach against earrings, preach it, Pastor Jim. Preach against parents, she'd come to me after service, she'd say, Pastor Jennings, you're telling the truth. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. Until one Sunday morning, Christine came in with a skirt so long, it was longer than many of those that had the Holy Ghost. She came to me, she said, Pastor Jennings? I said, yes. She said, look. I said, what happened? She said, I just woke up one morning with not a desire wow. or not even a, a want for pants. She said, I, it, the whole desire just left. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let God do it. The problem with many of us, we try to make people change at our pace when we feel as though we should change. Let God do it. That's right. And if you want the change, then let God do it to you. That's right. Are you listening? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. How do I change? That's right. Give me 2 Chronicles. Yeah. Famous scripture. Yes, famous scripture. 2 Chronicles, I believe, 7 14. 7, 14. Second Are you Chronicles, listening to the old seven man? And verse 14. It says what? If my people, which are called by my name, let's itemize it. If my people which are called by my name, first thing, shall humble themselves. Then what? And pray. Hold it. This is why sometimes many of us don't get no results. That's right. Pastor Jennings, I'm praying. That's nice. But are you humble with humble, it? Humble. Humble. So a lot of us are praying without humility. That's right. And God ain't paying that no mind. No. Like you so much. That's right. God say if, if. that means he's, he's laying terms to you. Yeah. If you want results, if. he's laying terms how to get it. That's right. What did he say? If my people which are called by my name shall, do what? shall humble themselves. That's why, that's what the scripture means, they broken. 
and contrite heart. Contrite heart. A heart that been broken. That's right. Many of us have a heart of stone. Yeah. For God to deal with you, God wants to break it. break it. That's right. You get a person with a broken heart, you won't get no resistance out of them. No. Are you listening? If my people which are called by my name. Many of you want God to deal with you and wonder what's wrong. That's you right. got a stony heart, many of you. That's right. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. What? In Psalms 51 and verse 17. The offerings of God. Are a broken spirit. Your spirit got to be broken. A broken and a contrite heart, oh God. A broken and, and a contrite heart, oh God. I will not despise. Do you hear this? That's right. Many of you are hard and cold. Hard. Because of some experience you had in some church. That's right. I saw this. I saw that. That's all right. You better see God. That's right. Things going to happen long as you breathe. That's right. You leave the Lord because what you saw in church. Yeah. Why don't you leave your job like that? Hmm. You Amen. see stuff going on the job, but you stay there, don't you? Yeah. You know why? You want that check. That's right. That's right. Then why don't you stay with God because you want to be saved? That's right. That's Are right. you listening to the old man? If my people which are called by my name to do what? shall humble themselves then what? and pray. That's what God wants. That's right. He wants everything to be humble. Come down. Humble. Stop looking at who you are. That's right. You're nothing but a human being. That's all. Anybody here that's not a human being, raise your hand. I want to I wanna zoom the cameras in on you. I got some, e, I got some ETs in here. <laughs> eh? Amen. Every man and every woman, glory to God, has to humble, humble themselves. Humble themselves. And this is why many of us, having got where we should have gotten in God, we haven't humbled ourselves. That's right. Ask God to humble you. That's right. And believe me, God have all kind of ways oh, yes. of humbling you. Oh, yes. The Holy Ghost said. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Then what? And pray. 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 Humble, then pray. Pray. Not pray, then become humble. No. Now put the cart before the horse. That's right. God wants you to be humble. Humble. Then what? And pray. You see, if you're humble, you will offer prayers willingly. That's right. That way you ain't praying to be seen. That's right. Praying to be heard. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shall humble themselves and pray. And then what? And seek my face. When we're praying, who should we be pulling on? And seek my face. Face. And what did God promise? And turn from their wicked ways. Oh. Turn. First stage. Humble. Humble. Next stage. Pray. Pray. Next stage. Seek my face. Seek his face. And while that's taking place, what we got to be doing? And turn. Turning. From their wicked ways. Turn. Humble. Prayer. Seeking the face of God. Yeah. Without the willingness of making an effort to turn, that's right. is in vain. That's right. It's all in vain. It's a process. Yeah. Humble. Humble. Pray. Seek his face. Yes, then what? And turn from their wicked ways. You have to make an effort. Yeah. Turn. Lord, lead us not, lead me not into temptation. temptation. All right, you pray that. <laughs> then uh, why do you keep going to the environment to be tempted? That's right. Lord, keep me away from that woman. Then why do you keep calling her? That's right. That's right. Amen. I want to soak you a little. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. 
Lord, make me stop going to the bar. Hmm. Then stop hanging around the company that keep taking you there. That's right. I want to say, well, Pastor Jennings, I'm looking for God to do everything for me. That ain't what this said. No. Do you hear what it says? And turn from their wicked ways. You got to do something. That's right. The word of God says what? And turn. The word of God says what? If my people which are called by my name. Yes. Shall humble themselves. That's pointing to what you got to do. Right. You got to humble yourself. And pray. You got to pray. And seek my face. You got to seek his face. And turn from and their wicked ways. And you got to be turning. That's right. That's right. You got work to do. Work. That's right. That's right. Everybody got work to do. Amen. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. Whatever ways you got, that's wicked. Don't ask me what they are. You know. That's right. Some say, Pastor Jennings, how can someone have the Holy Ghost and have wicked ways? Very easy. Very easy. Just look at yourself and you, you got your answer. That's right. You got your answer right there. Very easy. Pastor Paul said in me, do well of no good thing. No good thing. That man was an apostle, but it was wickedness in him. That's right. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, That's an right. apostle, an but apostle. wickedness was in him. Yeah. Until he declared, I'm not yet apprehended. Right. An apostle, but wickedness in him. Wicked. When I would do good, evil, evil is present. Was present. Yeah, present. Present. The Holy Ghost said. If my people which are called by my name well, do what? shall humble themselves. Are you humble tonight? Yeah. Are you praying with humility? That's it. Are you praying with sarcasm, mm. arrogance, like you doing God a favor? That's right. Are you praying out of being ritualistic, yeah. just a habit? Yeah. You're not really into it, just uttering words right. and can't wait until you get off your knees so you can don't miss your program. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. What if God says what? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. And pray. Start praying. And seek my face. Seek God's face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then what? Then will I hear from heaven. Oh, well, thank God no one can make me believe otherwise. That's right. He let you know what to do to get his attention. That's right. Many of us having God as attention like we want it. Because we didn't follow that pattern. Right. We're praying without humility. You ain't going nowhere. No. If God say how a thing must be done, you want results, do it on his way. That's right. That's right. Then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Then, then will I hear from heaven. And then what will happen? And will forgive their sin. Wait a minute. Hallelujah. Then. Hallelujah. For my sin to be forgiven, I got to humble myself, humble. Pray, pray, seek his face, turn, turn him from my ways. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Then what he said. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive. Then, 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 then I'll then. pay you some mind. Then. <laughs> That's right. Then i give you some attention. That's right. That's right. Then you will get through to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I let you know I heard you. That's right. Then I let you know I'm right here. That's right. Hallelujah. Then I live up to my word that you read. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost says what? Then will I hear from heaven. And what else? And will forgive their sin. Then he'll forgive what you've done. That's right. Then. But you got to seek him right. That's right. This is the remedy, the recipe, how to see God. Amen. If you don't seek him like that, you're just wasting time. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Anytime God itemized something and laid groundwork and tell you, then I then. hear. He laid it plain. That's right. 
That's right. Then that's the reason why you're not getting the answer right. until you come on those terms. That's right. But Pastor Jenna, why is it I pray, 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 and it seems like God don't hear me? Did you do it like that? But like this. Well, not quite like that. I don't want to hear that. Is right. it like that? That's it. Not, not quite. Is either like that or it's not. That's right. That's right. There's not even repentance without humility. Without humility. You can say, I'm sorry, anybody can say that. Yeah. And you have no humility whatsoever. Humility. Ain't no repentance. That's right. Because remorse humbles you. That's right. And make you seek God for forgiveness. Yeah. Hi, ain't no such thing as repentance without remorse. <laughs> repentance? Without remorse? Without remorse. Repentance. Without remorse, without conviction. Amen. That's not repentance. No. That's lip service. Yeah. They draw nigh to me with their mouth. The Lord said, but their heart is far from me. Far from me. They he declared in vain. Or it take God do they wish of me teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. It's in vain. In vain. Don't draw nigh to God with your lips or with your mouth. That's it right. is written, they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny, they him. deny him. And when it comes to every good work, they are abominable and reprobate. reprobate. What did the word of God say there? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. All right. You that are listening around the world and you that are here. Amen. What kind of humility that you have. Yeah. God is calling for humility. That's right. He don't care who you are. You got to humble yourself. Humble. The king did it down in Nineveh. That's right. In order for the king uh, to get God to detour his wrath, never mind king, sackcloth and ashes, including the king, he went down. That's right. You know, when you humble yourself, you'll forget your position. Yeah. You want to keep God off your back? You'll forget all about your position. Oh, you'll yeah. forget all about your title. Not only will you swallow your pride, you will get rid of it. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Many of us are too proud, too self-righteous. Too arrogant, too high-minded. High -minded. Thank God to humble ourselves before God. That's right. But God have a way of bringing circumstances in your life. You will experience humility on a level like you never had. <laughs> if you haven't begun turning from your wicked ways, yeah. you better get started tonight. Pastor Jennings, it's hard. I know it is. Oh, yes. But my God, you want to hear from heaven. That's it. That's Amen. It. And your turning from your wicked ways is never ending. That's right. Turn! Turn. I'm turning from what's wicked, and my direction, I'm turning towards God. That's right. For the correction of life. That's right. Never ending, turning. Yeah. Turn, 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 turn. Oh. You accomplish that. You accomplish that. No longer doing that. No longer in that. And next thing you know, when you're turning, you're bumped up into something else. Amen. Why do God want you to turn? Constantly working on self. That's right. Amen. That's why you're called pottery. Yeah. Eh? That's why you're called pottery. There's a will in the midst of the will. That's right. And we, the human family, is being formed by God in the potter's house in the church. But we got to be turning. Turning. And while that clay is being turned, there's the creator there. That's right. Using the hands, forming it. But in order for that clay to form, it got to stay wet. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the Bible talk about the Holy Ghost and liking it unto living water. Living water. In order for you to be formed on work or work on the will, 
you got to be wet with the water of scripture. That's right. That your clay may be formed and fashioned in a manner that a pure son come out of that. That's right. And a real daughter come out of that. That's right. If there's a crack in our pottery, get back to the wheel. That's right. Constantly turning. Constantly. Constantly being shaped. Yeah. Constantly being formed, and the clay cannot say to the potter, Why hast thou formed me thus? Why hast thou made me? In other words, while the word of God shaping you, forming you, creating you, shut your mouth during the whole process. That's right. And just submit to the formation. Amen. The clay can't say nothing no. to the potter. Nay, but oh man. Do you hear this? In Romans chapter 9 and verse 20. No. Oh, but oh man. Name me no old man. Who art thou that replies against God? Why you got so much mouth against the Bible? Shall be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why you got so much mouth against the Bible? <laughs> That's right. I don't believe this. I don't believe that. I believe everybody in the church a hypocrite. That's I right. believe everybody the wrong. What makes you so right? Yeah. Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Look at the sins in your own raggly life, and that's it. <laughs> Ask God to get raggly Ann and Andy right. That's right. Don't worry about nobody else's raggly life. No. Because your life is raggly. Amen. So raggly until the word of God prepared it to filthy rags. Filthy rags. Listen. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? Who art thou that open your mouth against your Lord? Shall the thing form Shall say the to thing him that formed it? Form. Now, God is telling you why you're talking so much. That's right. And now God is trying to, he, he's not trying, he's educating you. That's right. He wants you to see yourself. Shall the thing form. Say to him say that to formed Say to the one it, that's forming it. Why hast thou made me thus? You ever seen a clay plate talk? Mm. That potter wrote a work on the wheel, he makes whatever he wants. That's it. Horse, dog, cat, dragon, anything. Anything. It don't talk. No. He don't want to make a, a plate. He admired in his hand. That's right. Change the shape of it. Yeah. What he's doing, creating what pleases him. That's right. And everything he formed have no power. Yeah. It must submit to the hands of his creator. That's right. I, uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We got to submit to the hands of our Lord. That's right. You sang that song, uh, I want to live so that God can use me. Anywhere, anytime, and many of us are nothing but homegrown liars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're nothing but clay. Yeah. On the wheel of scripture. That's it. Here's God ready to form you. And yet you're trying to be something else. That's right. God say, I I'd be their God. And you shall be my sons and my daughters. That's right. But we try to be everything what God don't want us to be. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Who are you? Amen. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't care what the Bible says. I'm not going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in speaking in tongue, and yet I got some Holy Ghost. I don't believe Jesus Christ is God. I know there's one God. There's two thrones. David got a throne. Jesus got a throne. God got a throne. Moses got one. <laughs> My Lord. I don't see nothing wrong with having a little split. I don't see nothing wrong with having decorations in my hair. I don't see nothing wrong with having my nails shiny. That's right. Men, brothers, I don't see nothing wrong with tight pants. <laughs> Amen. Am I right? Amen. Who art thou? Who art thou that replies that against God? That keep running your mouth against God. That's right. Who art thou? Who are you? Why do you got so much to say against God's against word? God. Who gave you the right? Yeah. Who are you? Who art thou? That replies. Against God. Against God. Shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? I've seen a lot of pottery, cookie jars, cups, yeah. plates. 
I go in my kitchen cabinet and pull out a mug, <laughs> fix my tea. The mug don't say, I don't want to be used today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's if right. That mug talk is going to fall on the floor because I'm going to throw it down. <laughs> Amen. You ain't going to tell me which one of you things I can use. <laughs> Amen. I open that cabinet, the mugs ain't in there talking. No. Hey, here come, here come, here come, here come Gino again. <laughs> which one of us you think he going to get? There was right. one I'm reaching to all the mugs. He's like, he got you, he going to get you, he going to get you, he going to get you. No, he ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Oh, no. Do you hear the Bible talking? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? God is making a comparison. Look at yourself now. That's you right. that are watching around the world, this is you. That's right. Who art thou? That replies against God. I don't see nothing wrong with drinking. I don't see nothing wrong with smoking. I'm a smoking Christian. I go to the church of my choice. You think you're the only one right. I don't care nothing about no one church. Everybody going to be in heaven because just what Joel Austin said. <laughs> That's right. Who art thou? Who art thou that replies against God? Your arrogant self will heathen. Amen. Who are you that replies against God? That got so much mouth against your creator. Shall the thing. Shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Shall the thing that's me. Amen. Say to the one that made it. Why hast thou made me thus? What you make me for? That's right. Or what? Hath not the potter power over the clay? Do not God have power over you? Of the same luck. Of the same luck. To make one vessel unto honor. In and other words, God to take down one and put up another. And another unto dishonor. That's right. God form and make you out of whatever he wants you to be. That's right. It doesn't matter if people feel as though you shouldn't be that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's right. And Onijah didn't feel as though that Solomon should be king. That's right. So he wouldn't wait for King David to die. That's right. He went out and got some little priests and some <laughs> elders and whatnot and got upon the white horse and he went riding. He went riding. Nathan come to uh, King David. Hey, well, I thought Solomon was supposed to be king. Haven't you heard that Anonijah, he's riding on the That's white right. horse? What? <laughs> That's right. Thank God, man, David went to work. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, got the oil anointed, Brother Solomon. That's right. Made him ride upon the white horse. Yeah. Even Ananias had a feast. Yeah. You always will get crooks following crooks. a fool. <laughs> That's right. But if God haven't meant for you to do this, it'll fall apart. That's right. Amen. This is something you can't take in your own hands to do. No. Do you hear the word of God talking? Nay, but O oh man, who are Nay, but O oh man, who are, who are that you that reply against, against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? What? Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the pot of power over the clay? I think of me and my foolish. Here's God made me appreciate. Many times I would ask God, what you make me for? Oh. <laughs> I didn't think of me until that scripture just he was reading. I didn't think what? of me. <laughs> I, all the time I read that scripture, wow. not one time I thought of me. Mm. He, 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 he's reproving me now. <laughs> Amen. 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 He, he's, he's reproving and rebuking me now. Amen. Out of all the years I read that, wow. not once did I think of me. Mm. <laughs> and now he's laying me out. Amen. But you got to read it anyway. Nay, but old oh man, who are thou? Nay, but old oh man, who are thou? Who are thou? That replies against that God. Open your mouth against God. Shall the thing form say to him? When I make you, there's nothing you can say, but shut your mouth That's and right. just do what I tell you to do. That's it. Don't like it, but tell God I'll go. Yeah. Don't understand it, but tell God, Hallelujah. I'll go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, brother. Wonderful. He didn't say you can't reply. No. He just said you can't reply against, against God. Against God. That's right. Do you see what I'm talking? That's right. 
Any time I would talk to God, what you make me a preacher for? All these people around the world, you, you ain't had to bother me. What are you bothering me for? I could have had a normal life, not travel, just work, do business, be successful. And me and my wife raise our kids, and I can just play the organ or read for the preacher or sit like most brothers and nod the head and say amen. <laughs> and them that don't stay woke, go to sleep with them. Who art thou? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who art thou? That replies against God. That reply. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. When God puts you in it, you can't get out of it. That's right. When you're predestinated to do God's will, you can't get out of it. That's right. You can't pray out. You can't fast out. You can't walk out. My Lord. God! Amen. When he puts you in it. Who art thou? Who art thou that replies against that God? That got me and everybody else. That's right. Whom the Lord choose to send. That's right. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You can cry about it, but it ain't going to bother him. <laughs> no. If you try to physically run from it, you are replying against, against God. God. You know, replying against God, you don't have to do it with your mouth. You can do it with your body. That's right. Jonah did it with his body. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God yeah. told him, go on down to Nineveh. And Jonah, he replied against God, took off. Yeah. He replied against God verbally and physically. Right. Told God, I don't want to go down there. He tried to outrun him, but God had a fish reserve. That's right. What is God telling you? If I call you, yeah. and if I send you, if I preordain you to be this, do whatever you want. You think you're running away from it, but I got to reserve you'll run right back to me. That's right. That's right. Out of all Jonah running, he cut his time down. Amen. From three days to one. Oh, yeah. He ended up down in Nineveh anyway. That's right. Who art thou? Who art thou that replies against God? Who are you to say there is no speaking in tongues? That's right. Who are you to Who say there is no baptism in the name of Jesus Christ? That's right. When God put it in there. That's right. You are replying against God. Against God. That's right. If you're not up to something, just say you ain't up to it, but don't fight it. Right. Out of all your applying, don't let it be against God. That's right. Are you listening? Go and say God to what I'm talking. Nay, but, O oh man. Nay, but, O oh man. Who art thou that replies oh, against, reply God? against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Let us remember what position we're in. We're the thing formed. Thing formed. We're the thing formed. That's right. Saying to him. That formed it. That let you know God is our creator. What? Why hast thou made me thus? What you make me for? That's right. <laughs> what you make me like this for? Wonderful. I was having a good time. I didn't have these problems until I came in church. <laughs> That's right. The moment I repented, next day you know, seemed like everything broke loose. That's right. Me and my family was close. The moment I said I want to be holy, Father cussed me out, wife cussed me out, children cussed me out, yeah. husband cussed me out. Everything started changing. That's right. And if you're not careful, when that happened in your life, you'll find yourself replying against God. Against God. That's right. Clay is not made to talk to the potter. That's right. Shut up, Clay. <laughs> Amen. Clay might as well be quiet. Amen. Amen. You out there that are watching that are wealthy and millionaires. NBA players that are watching and NFL players that are watching and baseball players that are watching and boxers that are watching. Yeah. You are applying against God. You are replying against yes. God by not willingly obey him. You watch this program time after time, but you're still in your sins. That's right. Your rage against him. The Amen. Bible says your rage against him is not good. Not good. 
Do you hear what he says? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? You reply against God. Shall the thing Shall formed the say thing to him form, that formed it? Say to him that formed it. Why hast thou made me thus? What you do this to me for? Hath not the pot of power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? dishonor. What if God willing to show his wrath? Wait a minute. Amen. What if God willing to show his wrath? You know, if God going to stop you, I'd rather that he stop me in peace. That's right. Don't, don't show me your wrath, Lord. No. You know, I'd rather have the wrath of Satan. Oh, yeah. I want you to hear me real good. I'd rather have the wrath, the anger of Satan oh, yes. than the wrath of God. That's right. Someone say, well, how would you say that, Pastor Jennings? Because devil can't do no more than what the Lord says. Yeah. And the devil have to answer to God. That's right. Who do God have to answer to? God do what he want, when he want, with whom and where. And nothing you can do about it. That's right. He put his foot on you. You can't move. Yeah. Until the Bible said, that which the Lord have made crooked. No man can make straight. No man can make straight. Do you hear this? What if God willing to show his wrath? What if God willingly? That means he don't even constrain himself. Mm. He don't hold nothing back. That's right. What if he willingly show his wrath? And to make his power known. Make his power known. Endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Yes. And that he might make known the riches that of his he glory. he might make known the riches of his glory. On the vessels of mercy. On the vessels of mercy. Now yeah. the vessels he showed mercy on, he make known the riches. That's right. Of his glory. That's right. The vessels of what? The vessels of his mercy. Yeah. Those people. The living that he showed mercy upon, he would do what to? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Isn't that what you want from God? Amen. Amen. I want the riches of God's glory. That's right. What if God said we have this treasure in earthly vessels? That the excellency of the power may be, hallelujah, may be of God. Not of us. Not of, us. not of us. And it's not of us. Oh, no. The riches of his glory. Of God's glory. Amen. That's what I want from God. Oh, yes. Amen. Forgive me, Lord, for replying against you. Amen. Amen. May God forgive me. Amen. 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 You read it. I, I read can't it. change it. Yeah. And I have been so disgusted with God for putting me in the ministry mm. because it ain't like what people think it is. That's right. People come and tell me, Pastor Jenner, you're known all around the world. Don't they make you feel good? You's a fool. That's a fool. It ain't feel, don't feel good doing this. No. It is painstaking. It's exhausting. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and God knows spiritually. Yeah. When you're called and sent, everybody ain't called. No way. Someone said, but the Bible says many are called or few are chosen. chosen. But many are called to do what? <laughs> That's right. Well, Pastor Jim, the Bible said he called the whole earth. They ain't talking about preaching. No. That's talking about repentance. He, he called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down, down thereof. That's for repentance. That's right. Not for preaching. No, no. Well, we'll get into that another time mm -hmm. and break it down and take it apart by God's permission. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There are several ways to get in the pulpit. I won't get into it tonight, but I just tossed this out at you. Let you nibble at you when you go home. There are several ways to get in the pulpit. And all of them ain't called. No. There's by calling. There's by gift. There's by appointed. There's by group chosen. And there's by desire. That's right. Hey Amen. We'll get that another time. That's right. I just want to put that bread on the table and let you eat. And all of it is in the scripture. That's right. 
Somebody say, I'm called. What is it? What is it? Who told you you called? What is it? Yeah. What, what is a calling? Something you felt in your gut? Well, I've got the feeling there ain't no calling. That's not a calling. I was called. How do you know? What did you hear? Well, I ain't heard nothing. How did you conclude you called? Samuel! That's right. Spirit called Samuel. Samuel ran to Eli. Saul, Saul! Yeah. Paul said, I heard that excellent voice. But I may never say calling is a feeling you got. No. Call is the voice of God. That's right. Well, what about gift? That's what Timothy had. Timothy. A gift that lied dormant. And the Apostle Paul laid hands on him and stirred it up and said, from your youth, you knew the scriptures. That's right. What about desire? If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. What about group selection? Look at among you, seven men. Honest report. Honest report. Full of the Holy Ghost. Who we may appoint over this business. Wonderful. What about appointed? Ordained elders in every city as I, I have appointed it. Appointed it. And all those offices is not always a calling. That's right. That's right. I get into that another time. <laughs> we use that term loosely through the years. Calling, 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 calling because we didn't understand the term that was used. Right. So we used it loosely. <laughs> Amen. Hey Amen. I was in my room one night a few weeks ago and, and just thought on it. Hmm. Calling, calling, calling. And then the Spirit guided me to several different scriptures of different ways men got in the pulpit. No one said, well, every time a man is in the pulpit, he's a minister. First Timothy, chapter 2. Yeah. I give you Bible for a teaching brother. Bible ain't give him no title of a minister, elder, none of it. But he's a faithful brother. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Listen. And we'll start at verse 1. Says what? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace. That is in Christ Jesus. We have used the word calling, calling, calling loosely through the years. Yeah. Now let's come back to Bible. That's right. That's right. I feel like I'm called. Ain't no such thing exists. No. That's James Brownism. <laughs> come on back. Come on back. Come on back to the Bible. Stay right there. Don't move. That's right. I don't want your feeling. I don't want nothing. Come on back to the Bible. That's it. Did you hear what it says? And the things that thou hast heard of me among look, look many Paul witnesses. Look at Paul Timothy. What you heard of me. The same commitment. Wait here. What you heard of me. The same. Read the whole thing. And the things. The things. That thou hast heard of me. That you heard of me. Among many witnesses. Among many Many witnesses. The same. The same things you heard of me. That's right. Do what? The same commit thou you to commit faithful men. You commit that information. To faithful men. To faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also. Faithful preachers. Who shall be able to teach. Faithful preachers. Faithful men. Faithful ministers. Faithful men. Faithful elders. Faithful men. Men that got callings. Faithful men. Just faithful men. That's right. The Bible broke it up in several categories. That's right. You can never look at it from one category. Yes. The Bible has never said, nowhere, every man got a calling. Never. No. That's been the verbiage of religion for years, especially the apostolics. Right. You got to go to the Bible and see who's called. That's right. You call with no sound? Hmm. It's in my gut. You got to give me gut scripture. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about guts. You get bad guts. 
The way you get up here got to be in there. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. The way you get up here got to be in there. That's what makes it the truth of God. I'm staying with Bible. I'm not accepting nobody gut feeling. Nobody. That's right. Did you hear the old troublemaker? That's right. You got to come here, right there. That's when it. I tell you I'm not moving, I mean it. That's right. The Holy Ghost said that. And the things that thou hast heard of me. That you heard of me. Among many, among witnesses, many witnesses. The same, the same commit same. thou to faithful men. Faithful men. Who shall, be, who shall be able to do what? Who shall be able to teach others also. Teach him. That's He's right. faithful. Faithful. Teach him. That's right. Bishop Prick is the desired office. That's right. Evangelists can come about two ways. Two ways. Yes. Someone say what? Yes. Oh, yes. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, Philip was one of the seven. He was an evangelist. But Timothy had the gift in him, and Paul laid hands on him and set up the gift that was in him. That's right. But have you noticed all those positions have one thing in common? The laying on hands, of the, hands of the apostles. Every last one of them. I got the calling, I got the calling, I got the calling, I got the calling. I feel like I got a calling. Talk the Bible talk. That's right. Talk the Bible talk. Don't bring me your feeling. Who? Nobody. Nobody. I don't respect it. I don't honor it. I have no reverence to it. <laughs> I honor what's written. That's right. Otherwise, then that take what you got and flush it down the toilet, and as the toilet get clogged, I'm coming with the plunger of the scripture. That's right. I wish that God and I'm going to watch that stuff go down. <laughs> Come on back. That's right. The Bible ain't never said everybody got a calling. No. What about the scripture passage? It is the gift of calling. It says the gift and calling. And calling. Gift and calling. For the gifts and calling. Here. In Romans 11 and verse 29. Spelled gifts. G-I-F-T-S. That lets you know it ain't just talking about preaching. Gifts. Someone said, what is it talking about, Pastor Jennings? The Bible talk about the gift of the Spirit. The, of the, Spirit. the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. We took it. Calling, 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 calling. You know, sir, you're going to come back to the Bible. That's right. Everybody is not called. No, no way. When you read that Bible and see the men that was called, the work followed them. That's right. Not a disruptive gut, not a bad feeling, <laughs> not a woke up with a feeling. No. No. Come back to Bible. That's right. The way you get up here got to be in here. Yeah. Up here, in here. <laughs> Up here, in here. That's right. Up here, in here. Up here, in here. Not in here, get out of here. That's right. Did you hear that? That's right. Just read your Bible. You don't find where everything in here was saying they was called. Not in here. Not in here, no. The churches have adopted that terminology. Yes. You're called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called. The churches adopted that terminology. I'm called, I'm called, I'm called. Who calls you? Who calls you? God, what did he say? Uh, I got the feeling. Where is that at? You could have ate some bad greens. <laughs> I got the feeling. I want that. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Samuel! Samuel. God called him. God called him. But he didn't send him till later. That's right. So, so! God called him. Didn't send him till later. He had to go down and get straightened out. Ananias was sent to him, a certain disciple. Laid hands right. on him that he may receive the sight. 
He was called to the apostleship then, but he wasn't sent to later. Right. You can be called, but ain't sent at the same time. That's right. He was called. Saul, Saul, called to it, but he wasn't made it till later. That's right. You can be called to the house, but you ain't eaten till later. Right. So he said, when Paul was called then, he was made an apostle. How in the world using an apostle, no baptism, name Jesus Christ, no Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. And this is after the resurrection? After. If he was called then, That's why right. wasn't he in the church? That's right. When God called Paul, he wasn't in the church. No. He wasn't in the church. If he was in the church, why would Ananias lay hands on lay him? Hands on him. He was just called. The man wasn't even in the church yet. That's right. Didn't even have the Holy Ghost yet. That's Didn't right. receive the sight yet until Ananias yeah. lay hands on him. He received the sight and straightway he went preaching Jesus was the Christ. Right. Stay with in that book. That's it. Wonderful. I don't believe nothing. You, you even hear me saying it for years. Yeah. But what's in here? Oh, yes. And your brother say, I got the calling. All right. Where is it? Where is it? What did God say? I didn't hear nothing. This, you, when you called that then. <laughs> if I call you, Barry, come here. You hear me calling you. Calling you. Well, Byron, it's like laying in bed. Wake up. Oh, man, my stomach. Whew. What's wrong, Byron? I felt like you was calling me. Over stomach cramps? Amen. You go take some Tylenol. All of this religious garbage done. I done came up in that stuff. I came up in it. So I understand the verbiage of the apostolic for years. Yeah. This will say I got a call. This will say I got a call. This will say I got a calling. I got a calling. The Bible had never at no time styled all areas of ministry as calling. As calling. Religion did. Right. The Bible breaks down the very forms of ministry and how they got into yeah. it. Yeah. Timothy had the gift. That's right. From the scriptures, from the youth. You knew the scriptures. You said you knew them from your youth. From, from, from your youth. Yes. Your grandmother and your mother. And your mother. But Paul laid hands on him to stir up the gift that was in him. That's right. To all of you that say you got a calling, all of you, and I don't give two cents who you are. Yeah. Where is it in here? Where is it? Take your title and seize the word calling attached to it in the Bible. That's right. Take your title and seize the word called tied to it in the Bible. Just forget what we believed for years. Forget all that. Come back to Bible. That's right. You gut fillers. Stop eating that bad fish. And bad grits. I'm talking Bible here. That's right. That's right. You brothers that want to be ministers that's going to the evaluation team. I got a calling. I got a calling. Where? Where? What did you hear? What did God say? Why well, you heard God say nothing? You ever heard someone call and say nothing? <laughs> How you going to say somebody called you and then at the same time, they ain't saying nothing to me? Nobody said nothing. Does that even make sense? No. I was called. What did you hear? Well, I don't mean that. No, 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 no. That's right. I was called. That's well, right. I, I, don't, I don't mean that. What did you mean? I felt. I don't want that. No. Ministry ain't no game. No way. It's this church order. That's right. The apostle instructed Titus, left by thee in Crete. That's right. That you should ordain elders in every city. As Not as God called you. As I had appointed you. As thee. I has appointed you. Appointed thee. And then he laid out the qualifications. If any be blameless. The husband of one wife. 
What else? Having faithful children. Your children got to be faithful. Not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop, bishop must, must be blameless, blameless as the steward, steward of God. Of God not self-will. Not soon angry. Not go, don't get mad quick. Not given to wine. If any of you mad quick right now, you ain't fit to be all day. Not fit. That's right. Not soon angry. Can't get mad quick. If you get mad, wait till later. Don't get soon. Work your way into it slowly. That's right. Did you hear? Not soon angry. Not given to wine. No striker. Not given to filthy lucre. Can't love money. Not, but a lover of hospitality. You gotta love hospitality. A lover of good men. What? Sober. Stable minded. Just. Honest. Holy. Holy. What? Holy. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. Don't even be evaluated. <laughs> That's right. Time for the Holy Ghost. That's right. When you doing being evaluated, you ain't got no Holy Ghost. Amen. Hold it. Temperate. Self-control. Holding fast the faithful word. Wait a minute. You got it now. This is faithful words right faithful here. Faithful word. So now you look at what you say happened to you and take it to the Bible and see is that faithful words. Right. I didn't say faithful feelings. No. Faithful word. Are you listening? Holding fast the faithful word. I don't word. want faithful feelings. That's right. I dreamed I was in a pulpit. Okay. You may dream you was rich, but you're still working for somebody. Amen. I used to dream I can fly. Yeah, when I was a child, I couldn't, I, I dream I was on my way. And don't, and don't let me watch Superman. Or Shazam. Or Ultraman. God, when I watched Ultraman and saw Hayata and the Science Patrol, I ran, I ran and got my spoon and went in the street and held it up. Waiting to change. Waiting to change. And I was running around. <laughs> Ultraman. Hallelujah. You see, some is laughing because they can identify with it. Many are called. But a few are chosen, chosen to do it. That's right. You got to read that whole scripture that talks about many are called. That's right. There's more than one way to be called and sent. That's right. It's more than one way to be called and sent. That's right. You brothers that's walking around, I've been called. What did you hear from God? What did God say to you? Amen. What did God say to you? You better think about it before you lie on the Holy Ghost. That's right. Do you even know what the term calling means? It is not a feeling. No, no. The Bible ain't never described calling as a feeling. No. Calling means that. God calling. He heard you heard God's voice. That's right. I want to say, well, God called me through his word. What did he say then? What did he say? He told me, go in the head of the highways to compel my people to come. You can do that by giving out tracts. That's true. That's just deal with it with the Bible. That's right. When I look at your title, and if you say you're called direct of God, See, is a direct calling attached to the title. That's right. I came out the apostolic. I'm familiar with the verbiage that's used. Yeah. And they've been tossed around loosely for years. This got to call him. That got to call him. That what they call him. No, 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 no. Every capacity of ministry is not called. That's right. There's appointed. There's selection. That's the Bible. That's there's appointed, there's selection, and there's desire. 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 Yeah. If a man desires the office, office of a bishop, of bishop, it tells you he desire a good a work. Good work. And it didn't say he got to be called to it. No. It just said what qualifications he got to have in order to be it. That's right. You don't have those qualifications. I don't care how many voices you hear. You don't have these qualifications. You ain't it. That's right. You can't yell you the heavyweight champion of the world. You ain't got no belt. Only belt you got us on Toys R Us that went out of business. <laughs> That's why a lot of folk don't like Pastor Jennings because a lot of this stuff, folks, folks been doing it for years. Yeah. Uh, come on back and do it the Bible way. I got a calling. What is it? What is it? What do you mean you got a calling? Mm -hmm. I feel like I got a calling. Ain't no such thing. No. There ain't no such thing. I feel like I got. There ain't no such thing. The Bible ain't never taught that. 
We come out of the apostolic faith that taught it. Sometimes bitches to ask you in the apostolic church, you got a calling? Well, yeah, what is it? Well, I feel like I'm called to this area of ministry. You got the feeling? Yeah. I feel like I'm called. You, you do? Who gave you that feeling? Well, I think it's God. Wait a minute. You think it's God? Did you know it wasn't God that told Timothy to be an evangelist? No. Paul told him. Do thou the work of an evangelist. Not God told him. That's right. Paul told him. Do thou the work of an evangelist. I told Todd, do the work of an evangelist. That's right. Why? I saw the gift in him. Right. Did God call him? No. No. Todd can't tell nobody God called him. He'll be lying. That's right. God didn't call him. That's right. No more than God called Timothy. Right. But the gift was in him. That's right. Thank God, and I know my position when I lay hands on them is set up the gift that's in them, and everywhere I send Todd, God give him victory. Amen. Everywhere. Everywhere. Amen. Do the work. The elders. You got to have qualification, then be ordained. That's right. The Bible ain't never said an elder is called. No. The Bible ain't never said it. There's no. not even a half a scripture that says it. No. Nowhere. Nowhere. Bible called Titus an elder. Called no. Gaius an elder. My dear beloved brother Gaius. Gaius. An elder. Bible ain't say Gaius was called. No. Someone says he got to have the calling. Says who? That's right. You see how quiet it is now? That's right. That's the apostolic stuff. Come right back to that Bible. That's it. Come back to that Bible. That's right. All areas of ministry, the Bible have never categorized. You can read the Bible for yourself and see how they were selected. Look at the seven in the book of Acts. For years, we said they were deacons. We find out they weren't, they deacons. weren't deacons. But here come Philip, who was called an evangelist. evangelist. And the Bible said, God has set some in the church. That's right. He itemized it. So I said, well, if you ain't called, how did God set him in the church? Different ways. He called and sent the apostles. He called and sent the prophets. And the apostles appointed. The, uh, the apostles appointed the elder. The apostles ordained the evangelists. Or the apostles tell you, look ye out among you. That's right. And out of that seven, Philip said, I'm one of the seven. One of the seven. Who was he? Evangelist. Philip the evangelist. You better not tell me those seven was called. I'll make you read it. That's right. Apostolic verbiage. That's all it is. I came out of it for years. If you're going to be an elder, you're going to be it the Bible way. That's right. If you can't be an elder the Bible way, you can't preach here. No. Because if you tell me you called, I'm going to make you go to that Bible and find me one elder who professed to be called. That's right. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. I got the feeling that don't work. James Brown dead. <laughs> Amen. I came out of that trash. Amen. You said you, you 80 years old. You know. If you're called, where's your works? That's right. Where's your anointing? That's right. Where's your works? Where's your anointing? Where's your revelation? Where's your inspiration? Yep. Not even Apollos was called. That's right. He was just eloquent in the book. That's right. How in the world a man going to be called and sent and need a husband and a wife to expound unto him the more perfect way? That's right. And yet, he was favorite, the, the book says, in the scriptures. But you better not tell me Apollos was called. Yet, he was a minister. That's right. Eloquent. But you better not tell me he was called. No, 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 no. And you better not tell me he said he had the calling. No. 
I came out of that apostolic stuff. I know the language. Come back to Bible. That's right. You think I've been saying that for fun? Come back to Bible. The Bible's challenging everyone that claim they got a calling. Yeah. All of you brothers in here that say you was called, I'm challenging it with the Bible. That's right. And you know who going to win? The Bible. Oh, yeah. Hey, don't you go tell me. I know what God said to me. God talked through the From Bible. The God say he that believe on me as, as the, the scripture has said. said. That's what the word of God says. That's right. You got the calling? What, what did you hear God say? What did God say? Let's touch with Bible. What did God say? What did he say? Samuel! He run to Eli. That's right. Samuel! He run to Eli. That man was being called. Yeah. God wasn't whistling at him. <laughs> no. Call David, call Solomon, yeah. and appeared to Solomon. And appeared to him. Call Jeremiah and told him, "Before I formed thee, out of the belly I knew you. Before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet." Jeremiah told us what God said. God said and then Jeremiah said what he said. He said, oh, my Lord. I cannot go. I'm a child. And the Lord said unto me, don't you say you're a child. But thou shalt go to all that I send thee. He not only was called, but he was sent direct from heaven. That's right. That's Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Come back to the Bible. If we ain't going to come back to the Bible, don't even waste our time. And ain't nobody coming up here and get around that Bible. Nobody. That's right. Did you hear the old troublemaker? That's right. We're going to do it the Bible way, Bible way. or we're going to shut everything down. For you to get up here, you got to come through that scripture. Yeah. Because Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the door. And we're going to open that door wide, and I'm going to look at Scripture. That's right. And see how did you get in. And if you come in the other way, thief. You're a thief and a robber. And a robber. The bishopric is an office that's desired. Desired. And an office that one is appointed in. A bishop is an elder. That's right. It's not two different offices. Right. A bishop is an elder. In the first chapter of Titus, he said, Are they elders in every city as I is appointed thee? Then he addressed the same occupation to say that if a bishop be blameless. That's right. Same thing. Same thing. No in these churches, you are elder, then some nut ordained you a bishop. That's like I give you $2 and then I give you uh, eight quarters. That's right. I give you two dollars, and then I give you eight quarters. You thought you got more? No, you didn't. Same two. One make noise, and the other don't. That's right. That's right. Bible speak plain. If a man, if a man desire the desire office of a bishop, the office. That means if you want to be a bishop. That's right. If he want to be a bishop. He desireth a good work. Paul said the work is good. Good work. But what? A bishop then must be blameless. Now he's telling you if you want this position, right. this is what you got to be before you can get it. A bishop then must be blameless. He's going to itemize it to you. That's right. Keep it like the Bible. Keep it like that. I've said more over. We ain't moving. Wonderful. The God of Abraham have blessed me and plant my Wonderful. feet solid. Before I met anything in here, I'm not moving. We cannot say we're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and then deviate from that Bible. Amen. All of you fellas said you got calling. What voice did you hear? What, God, what did God tell you? You mean to tell me all you got all these callers? What, you don't need me then. That's right. 
You got all these callings. What do you, what do you need me for? Yeah. You need an apostle. Oh, yes. You got to have an apostle. I have one. An apostle set the church in order. That's right. This ain't about high-mindedness and big I and big you. This is about the apostles' doctrine and the order of the church. Church, church order. Forget feeling, forget emotion. That's right. Church order. Not this trash we was taught for years. Church order. That's it. Wonderful. Wonderful. You can't make me say I got a calling if I ain't. If I ain't got no calling, I ain't got none. Yeah. But you that said, I, I, I think I'm called. You think. You think. Do you think you got to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Do you think you're black? Do you think you're white? That's right. Do you think you got to take a bath? Wonderful. Look at the world you think this is. Amen. Will come out of your mouth will either save or damn. You that say you got the feeling of a calling, where such a feeling ever exists in that Bible? In the scriptures. Don't you, rep don't you reply against God. That's right. It ain't nobody in that Bible said they had a feeling. No. Not one. Because you got to get a witness. Yeah. Not in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's it. I know it thing is on working on this, but I'm going to follow the move of my boss. Yeah. You call? You, what did you hear? What did God tell you? What did he say? Well, I woke up at night sweating. Turn the heat <laughs> down in the house. I don't believe nothing. That's right. You call? We know what calling is. If you don't, I strongly advise you, be scared for that to come out of your mouth. That's right. If you don't know what it is, I strongly advise you, you better be scared for that to come out of your mouth. That's right. Wonderful. No, there ain't no speaking in tongue now. Happy New Year, I said. Wonderful. This is Bible. Yeah. I'm telling you, ain't nobody gonna move me from the Bible. Yeah. My mother used to come to me and she said, son, I pray. You never change. I tell my mom, look, just pray and ask God to give you strength, because you gotta worry about that. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> this right here. Has it plain. plain? I take this over psychology. Oh yes. Astrology, yes. sociology, yes. Iggyology, <laughs> Piggyology, yes. Dubiology. I take this. Oh yes. If you gonna go and say you're called, called. I'm gonna make you call for Bible, right. where the man in that Bible that got your position declared himself to be called. And you better not tell me that God doing something new. Because no. God says nothing new under the, sun. under the sun. Every office in that Bible is clear how one got it. That's right. It's in there how they got, how it. They got it. And you think God is going to flip it up and change it for you? I feel as though that I, I got this feeling. I, I came out of false church where that went on. Yeah. My former bishop had a feeling. He said the Bible came to him four foot by four foot. <laughs> Big word. <laughs> Four foot by four foot, big word. Really big Bible, really big. Some of you is not ready to be ordained. You, don't, you mean to tell me a title and you don't know how to go get it? You don't know how that title is administered to you? Yeah. God had to call me. God ain't had to do nothing but be God. That's right. If a man desire, desire, you can desire ministry. Or you can have the gift in you. Yeah. Timothy had the gift in him. in him. 
I so plain in the Bible as Acts 38 is. That's right. Paul laid hands on him and stirred up the gift. You know you ain't been called. Don't you go lie and say you was. That's right. If I can make you say you're called and you ain't, you don't need to be up here. You're too unstable. That means I can make you tell a lie. That's right. Come on back to Bible. I don't care what church you came from. Hear the old man now. I'm telling you, I don't give two cents what church you came from. No. Go to that Bible. It says gifts, plural. Gifts. Gifts. Gifts and calling are without repentance. Read the, whole, read the whole verse. In Romans chapter 11 and at verse 29. That's what? For the gifts. Plural. And calling of God are without repentance. What else? That's it for that verse. Okay. What else? For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. There are many gifts out there. Gifts. And there are many callings out there. Right. Gifts. Gifts. And calling. And calling. You got gifts. Many gifts. There's many gifts in the church. That's right. Gift of wisdom. For the gift. one is given by the Spirit. Listen at this in the book of Corinthians. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. Begin at verse 7. At verse 7. What is it? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What is it? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And. To another the word of knowledge. And. By the same Spirit. And. To another faith by the and. same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing. The gifts of what? The gifts of healing. Spell, by, spell, spell gifts. G-I-F-T-S. That means ability with, uh, to heal for healing in different aspects. Right. Gifts. gifts. Plural. Gifts of healing. Plural. Gifts not singular. of healing. Do you know why? There's different kind of healing. Mental healing, emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. Gifts. Gifts. We've been quoting it wrong. Gift, singular. Right. It's been quoted wrong for years. It didn't say gift, singular. Gifts of healing. All kind of ways to heal a person. Wonderful. God can give someone the ability to can heal a person all kind of ways. Mm. I mean without praying. I want to say all healing comes through prayer. That's a lie. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Have known me to preach the gospel, to bind up the broken heart. Right. Preaching the gospel can heal a heart. That's bind right. it up. Bind it up. Didn't pray. Didn't lay hands on them. But preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. All right, listen. Wonderful. Hallelujah. In one place, the apostle didn't pray. He told them, stand on your feet. That's right. He stood up and leaped. He just spoke the word. That's right. When he went to Lazarus, Jesus didn't pray. Lazarus! Come forth! He spoke it. Lazarus, come on out of there. That's right. The word gifts is how? Gifts. Spell it. G-I-F-T-S. We quoted it wrong for years. Gift, singular. Right. Now they're down to one gift, preaching. Wow. Mm -mm. Go back and look at that again. That's right. Go to the verse above that. Verse 8. It says what? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And? To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. He's talking about the different gifts. Right. Word, word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. Gifts. Different gifts here. That's right. It's all given by the Spirit. God gives you wisdom how to implement knowledge. It's a gift. Gift. Wonderful. God giving the gift, how to dive into the vital world, take it apart, break it down. Wonderful. God giving the gift. That's something. Not gift, singular. Now there are diversities of gifts. Chapter verse, verse. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4. There are different diversities kinds of gifts. Of, no, singular. G I F T S. And we have took this scripture and thought it was just talking about preaching. True. Preaching is a gift. That's true. Singular. Don't try to make God plural if he's one. Don't try to make this singular if it's plural. That's right. 
Do you hear? Now there are diversities of gifts. There's different kind of gifts. But the same spirit. What are they? And there are diverse and there are differences of administration. Yeah. But the same Lord. What is it? And there are diversities of operations. Different functions. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. All these different areas of ministry is the work of God, but it's different ways to get in it. Right. Why? Because the different offices is what make the administration. That's right. But there's different ways to get in that office. Right. Like the presidency. You can get in that office by election. And you can get in that office by default. The president died. Vice president didn't even get elected to be president. That's right. You just end up in there. Right. Get sworn in right on the spot. On the spot. Wonderful. Don't try to create a method of getting in something that God did not create. Because right. somebody out there can come challenging you on it. Yeah. Stay within the Bible. That's All right. you fellas that say you got a calling, go to the Bible. That's right. You that say you got it in your gut, in your back, in your behind, in your leg, all this Charlie horse. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't playing with none of you. Amen. You say you got a calling, go to that Bible. Amen. And read it in there. Read it in here. If you can't find it in there, where that office is called, don't you lie on that book. That's right. Am I right, Bishop Williams? Don't you lie on that book. That's right. Oh, I know what God told me. I'm not moved. This is where I'm going. That's right. Pastor, you had a dream. So did Martin Luther King. <laughs> that one day, little black boys and little white girls would hold hands and say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. <laughs> I don't care nothing about your dream. And here you got a nightmare. Amen. You see, that's one thing God made me determined to do is to lead the church right. Wonderful. All you fellas that say you got a calling, what did God call you to be? I don't know. What? <laughs> that's right. I think, you think what? Well, I feel like I got this on me. Where is it? That's right. Well, I thought about being a pastor, but then I changed my mind and said, wait a minute, I'm going to try evangelism. Who in the world shift themselves around shift. like this? Well, you become this ministerial shapeshifter. That's right. That's why some is not going to stay here, because I, stay, I'm, I ain't getting out of here. You can't accept my calling, I can accept the Bible. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing I'm going to accept. If that's the fin you, you shouldn't be here. That's right. Because I'm telling you to your face, I ain't coming out that Bible. That's right. Did you hear the old troublemaker? Yeah. Pastor Jennings ain't coming out that Bible no more than a dog can tap dance. That's right. And make me move. That Bible is a guideline for the church. In the world, you got the calling to be a pastor. Then you say you got the calling to be an evangelist. Then I got the calling to be an elder. Then I, 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 and I couldn't decide what I want to be. So I said, wait a minute, Lord. I'm going to wait. wait. Minute, and then Lord. the Lord called you to be a prophet. You dropped that in three months. That's true. Five different positions. And look how silly that sound. Yeah. God said I'm not the author of confusion. confusion. That's right. And you've been dumped in five different positions. You think God is a toy? That's right. This is 2022. Cut that foolish talk out. Amen. Come back to the Bible or sit down. Amen. Come back to the Bible. I'm holding the Bible on everybody. That's right. Come back to that or sit down. That's right. This is something that me and Dan the man Stays that used to talk about from the basement up to now. This Bible right here yeah. is a dangerous book. Oh, yes. And coming out of apostolic and Pentecostal have ruined a lot of us. And we got hangovers. Right. 
coming out the apostolic. Hey, what's going on? Oh, called, man. What's wrong with you? What's <laughs> up? You call, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you? I don't know. I'm, I was an elder. I tried that for three years. Then I tried being a pastor. Then I tried being an evangelist. But my work couldn't go nowhere. Yeah. When did God ever call and send a man that wasn't productive? That's right. What you trying to make God a fool? Here we teaching all this Bible, and you this blind? Amen. You call? Called. Go here. Yeah. Show me what you are in here. If you can't show me in here, you tell that lie the last time. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Right here is what I believe. That's right. I know what being called is. I know it. When I tell you I heard his voice, I ain't talking about I read something. I ain't talking about what I read. No. no. I heard God's voice louder and clearer than you hear mine now. I was called and sent to do what I'm doing. You think you're the only one called? No. No way. Well, he called the whole earth. I ain't dealing with preaching. If that's the case, that means he called the whole earth to preach. But then who right. going to follow that's right. Everybody's called the preacher. Who in the world going to follow? That's right. I had a dream I was in the pulpit. Okay. But what did God tell you? Right. Look at your office. Look at the title. Go to the Bible. Right. And see was anybody declared themselves what you declared. That's right. If you can't find it, I'm going to shoot it to pieces. Amen. If you're offended by it, don't get up here no more. If you're a minister in the branch church, I'll fire you and take you down. When it comes to that Bible, I ain't tolerating no lies. Ain't nobody going to be lying on God. And that's why some <coughs> ministry won't be blessed because you're lying on heaven. Right. Amen. Are right, you listening to what I'm talking? Amen. All I'm trying to do is help you. Pastor Paul said I set all things in order when I come. I had no intentions on working on this at all. Amen. But the Holy Ghost moved me to put things in order. In order. And I'm going to put it in order with the Bible. Amen. You can talk behind my back after the benediction if you like. That's right. But you ain't going to be with me for 10, 15, 20 years. I know I'm called. I know I'm called. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That's it. Where is it? Where is it? Here's all the knowledge that Dan the man Stasiak had. And Dan got knowledge. Oh, yes. Yeah. And got a gift in him. Yeah. You won't even pay him to tell that lie and say he's called. No. You know why? Knowledge make you no better. Right. He's just waiting on the laying of hands of the Presbytery, that's all. That's and it. I know he got the gift in him. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. William's got the gift in him. Oh. William's got the gift in him. Oh. But Williams told me straight up, I do not want to be ordained. I said, why? He said, because then you're going to mess around and send me somewhere in the preach. I'd rather be what you read. <laughs> yes, he did. And he got the gift in him. Amen. Williams got the gift in him. Amen. And I know it's there. I see it's there. Amen. He told me to my face, I don't ever want you to be, all, I don't ever want to be ordained. I said, Williams. You know? He said, no, because if I be ordained, you're going to have to send me and send me and send me. And he said, no, I prefer just let me stay reading. And that way I can go with you when you got to go. (laughs) 
I say like the Apostle Paul, I say this not to condemn you. That's right. But the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah. He, he's not moving on me to deal with this for nothing. That's right. Hey, man, I was getting ready to quit. <laughs> Some of y'all got feelings in your guts. Amen. That's of the devil. That, that's it. You got feelings in your gut. Your calling is in your gut. It's of the devil. That's right. That's right. If it ain't in that Bible, everything else is of the devil. Of the devil. That's right. Oh, if you can take this sound, doctor, you good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Ordained elders in every city I as appointed. I have appointed, appointed thee. The apostle Paul appointed Titus and then gave Titus permission. That's Ordained it. elders in every city. Every it's city. plain. Every he city. said, as I has appointed thee. If we ordain men to be elders, they can't even take it upon themselves to ordain a soul unless they get permission. That's right. He said, as I, I had appointed, thee. appointed thee. That's doctrine. That's right. That's not request. That's doctrine. That's doctrine. That's doctrine. What an elder like saying, I ain't got to wait for Pastor Genesis. Well, who going to tell you? Mm. Mm. Who going to tell you? That's right. First chapter Titus says what? To, uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse 4. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. What is it? Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. What is it? For this call. For this call. Left I the increase. The apostle got the authority to tell you where to go. That's right. When to go. How long to stay there. What to do when you're there. That's right. That's right. Lord, that God, I say like Paul, I magnify my office. Wonderful. Wonderful. I was called, hallelujah, to the apostleship. That's right. I was called in it. Put in it. That's Not right. for fun. That's why I have no problems putting church in order. What I got to lose after what? Fine, long as I don't lose God. That's it. The Bible is right. That's and we're going to be wrong. Yeah. Bible speaks plain. You can't, if you ordain the elder, you just can't jump around and go ordain men. No way. For this cause left I the increase. Do you see this written here? Amen. That thou should. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. What? And ordain elders in every city. Where he get his permission from. As I had appointed thee. If I ordain Brother Jones an elder. He may come talk to me. Well, you know, this brother make a good elder. Mm -hmm. I consider what he said. Yeah. Meet the brother. But I bet I find out he went and ordained him and I ain't talked to him. That's right. But you know, I'm taking Jones out the pulpit. That's right. Why? He went beyond his biblical place. That's right. Because if I didn't appoint him to do it, and the Bible speaks plain. And ordain elders in every city as. How must you go about the ordination? As I had appointed thee. You can speak in tongue now. Yeah. But if you don't talk that Bible talk, I ain't yeah. paying you no mind. That's right. I'm not even listening. That's right. You won't even consider. No. I don't even consider it. I consider scripture. That's it. We got here by scripture. Yeah. We ain't get here by personal feelings. No, no. Nothing infiltrating the church but That's scripture. It. That's it. That's it. Do you hear it? And ordain elders in every city. As what? As I had appointed thee. Now, what must qualification Paul tells Titus before you actually do the ordination? If any be blameless. Wait, 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 wait. What? If any be blameless. You got a girlfriend who can't ordain you. No way. You got a second wife, I can't ordain you. You love money, I can't ordain you. That's right. You paying someone in the church to keep quiet? I can't ordain you. Blameless. Amen. Preacher at church, lover boy on the job, I can't ordain, I can't ordain you. No way. Lover boy, lover boy Jack, I can't ordain you. <laughs> Quick tempered, I can't ordain you. Mm -mm. Nah. Mm -mm. 
If any be blameless. You got to say amen to this. It's like he's asked you 38. That's right. If you can't say amen to this, stay out from up here. That's right. Because this book is judging you. Yeah. All of you calling fellas. Calling. Mm -hmm. Calling. 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 <laughs> That's right. Who's doing this calling? Who's doing the calling? Who's doing it? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I was called to be a pastor. Come tell me that. I make you read it. Read that. I make you read it. That's right. I read what he called the prophets are direct. I read what he called the apostles, the apostles. direct. He called them. They heard his voice. That's right. He heard his voice. No gut feeling. No, no. No, I told the Lord I wasn't going to go. So I, I couldn't eat for a while. I wasn't going to go away to work. <laughs> Where did we get all this ham and egg visions from? I came out of that stuff. Yeah. Years ago. Years ago. Amen. Before my father died, he was a bishop. Mm -hmm. Ordained in a false church. My father was under me. Yeah. He came to work with me. Tell you a conversation me and my daddy had that I ain't never told nobody. I read that scripture in Titus. I said, Pop, let me talk to you. I said, did God call and send you? He said, God didn't call me to lead, but he called me to preach. I said, what did he say to you? He looked. He said, uh, what you saying? I said, I said, I was asking you, Pop. What did he say to you? I said, you know how you called me and I come running? What did God say to you that made you move? Right. You know what he said? I, I, never, thought, I never thought of that. Mm. I said, then how did you feel as though God called you? He described the same thing that I heard many say. I just... I had this feeling that I had to do something for God. I said, but where is that at in the Bible? That you had a feeling to be a bishop. Wow. He said, <laughs> he said, boy, the Lord is with you, ain't he? <laughs> Me, you see, me, me and my pop, me and my father can talk like that. Yeah. He said, whatever you do, stay in that Bible. Stay in it. Stay in it. I said, you know, Jennings ain't coming out the Bible. No, you're not. I'm not coming out of it. I don't want logic. I don't want opinion. I don't want feeling. I don't want philosophy. That's right. I don't want theology. Any brother in the truth of God that said he had the calling and it was a feeling, you were deceived the by the devil out of hell. And I don't care if it's your daddy. There ain't no such thing in that Bible where your calling is in your stomach. <laughs> That's right. I read where the Holy Ghost is as living waters, but not no calling. Not call. Take that apostolic junk and send it back where it came from. Amen. Come back to Bible. Amen. And stay there. That's it. I came up to apostolic. Dan the man, Steve Dad came up to apostolic. This elder here came up to apostolic. King came up to apostolic. Cole came up to apostolic. A whole lot of y'all came up to apostolic. Mm. We used to the verbiage. Right. Practically every minister that was in the apostolic church, I'm called. I'm called. You know why? That's what the bishops taught them. That's right. Before you get up here, you got to have the calling and nobody explained what it was. That's right. Everybody thought it was guts and headaches. 
and bad <laughs> aches and bad tooths. That's right. I done heard all type of madness. I was going to go. When I tell you I wasn't going to go, I had a toothache for three years. I done heard back. When I came out to Avastar, you know what they said about Paul? Paul said that I had a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan a buffer. And the Apostolic Church, you know what they said that was? Paul had eye trouble. His thorn in the flesh was eye trouble. And the scripture they thought he had eye trouble was because Paul said, I wrote large. large. They actually thought that meant Paul wrote large letters. No, writing large just simply means he wrote a lot. He wrote much. That's all it was. That's it. The way I was raised in the churches I came out of, I'm grateful. Because it gave me a better appreciation and a broader understanding. Go to the Bible. That's right. Don't get mad with Pastor Jennings. Don't get upset. And don't blame me because I pointed you to Scripture. Yeah. All you pointed me is to guts, back, shoulders, knees, <laughs> headaches, bad eyes, bad teeth, bad breath, bad feet, everything. Amen. This governs the church. That's right. Not Geno Jennings. That's right. This governs the church. This, governs it. this is our GPS system. Yeah. And when the God come back for you, you stand before him with a calling that's not in here. That's right. Thine word has thine hid in thine heart that I may not sin against thee. God call you. Amen. And it's not in here. You're telling a lie. That's right. If it's if it's any if, if it's in any other part of your body, but not in there. <laughs> That's right. You get rid of that constipation. Get rid of it. Amen. Get some Epsom salt. That's what they give inmates in prison. If you get too constipated, they give you Epsom salt. Mm. And I advise you, don't have nowhere to go that day. In fact, for a couple of days. Amen. Amen. I believe the Bible. That's it. I don't believe in a bunch of unnecessary, long, drawn-out conversation because I don't want to hear no Hebrew, Greek, Latin. I don't bit more care about that than I do a whistling dog. <laughs> dog got his tail up and head up. I don't want that. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. If you can't hold this Bible, this truth, and stick to this, that's it. push your feelings aside, you ain't fit to be ordained. That's right. That's right. We got ordination tomorrow. You don't believe this. Yeah. I ain't touching you. I ain't touching you because I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. You know why? This is that. This is that. And I ain't moving. That's right. I believe that. The Bible have never taught that all the areas of ministry is a calling. No. Apostolic teaches it. Pentecostal teaches it. Baptist teaches it. But the Bible never the Bible taught never it. Taught in fact, you don't even find not even an apostle in the Bible teaching a church using that language. No. Nowhere. No. There's not one apostle that teach the no. church and use that type of language. That's right. To all the areas of ministry. No. It got to be a calling on your life. No, it don't. No. You don't read where it was a calling on the lives of the seven. No. There was a dispute going on. That's right. The widows neglected their daily administration. Right. Women problems. That's right. And the apostle said, look out among you seven, seven men. men. Paul the apostle said, look, we ain't got no reason to leave the word of God to go serve some tables. tables. Oh, that's right. 
It had nothing to do with calling. Women problems. That's right. The apostle said, listen, all right, this is what we're going to do. You look out among you seven men. This is what they got to have. Honest report. Honest report. Full of the Holy Ghost. Who we may appoint over this business. Wisdom. And then when they itemize who they go and choose, then the Bible says mightily grew. Word of they start going out there preaching the word. Right. You know, who come out being one of them? Philip. Philip. What was he? An evangelist. evangelist. Group selection. That's right. Philip. Stephen has so much power who came out of the group selection. I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Group selection. Group selection. But that man had an anointing God knows. Group selection, but laid on by the apostles. That's right. He said, I see heavens open. I see heaven open. open. He's being stoned while he's stoned. talking this. That's right. Look how strong he was. The man was being stoned. stoned. You don't read what he said. Stop. Don't stone me. They stoned him. He's in the spirit. In the spirit. I see heaven open. And Jesus standing on the right hand, the hand of God. Of God. Mm. You better not tell me he was called. That's right. He was one of the ones one that the was out of the group selection. One of the seven. Group selection. That's right. We use the term calling too loosely. Yeah. And God wants us to come back to Bible. Before we end up blaspheming on it. That's right. Let us not toss words around and connect it to ministry. Uh, there's a whole lot of brothers in the congregations who never been evaluated. A whole lot of them. And uh, said they had the calling. Talk to me one on one. Some have told me, Pastor Jenny, I don't, I don't do not want to be evaluated. I'm like, why? Because I don't plan on preaching. I asked some, were you called? It was like, nope. <laughs> I said, but you, you know, you told me a few weeks ago you was. I said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> I asked him, what changed your mind? He said, the word. Yeah. I said, what is it about the word that changed your mind? I took your advice. I started looking to see, was it in there? Amen. I couldn't find it. And it hurted my pride. Mm. I said, don't let it hurt your pride. Let it save your soul. That's right. This ain't got nothing to do with pride. This have nothing to do with pride. I ain't worrying about having 20 and 30, 40,000 ministers. That's right. And then this thing is being preached wrong. The Apostle Paul said, you make shipwreck. You got the calling to do what? To do what? Well, I always felt as though I should be a preacher. What made you that important? <laughs> Here I was sent and ain't never felt as though I should have been a preacher. <laughs> Even Pastor Paul said he wasn't worthy to be what he was. Yeah. Well, what kind of man are you? I always felt as though I should be a preacher. Wait a minute, brother. You better slow down. <laughs> That's right. You better first feel as though you need to take a bath before you need to be a preacher. <laughs> How did you get so high, so arrogant? I feel as I, I knew. I feel as though I should be. Whoa, wait a minute. That's saying you feel as though that God should have made you. Who are you? Who, are, Who are thou that replies? Against God. Who art thou? There's boldness in their stupidity. Right. I, I, I'm not worthy to be what I am. Yeah. Not at all. I ain't got sense enough to know it. Yeah. Amen. I know many viewers out there logging on can't stand this. He think you're the only one, right? Nope. I believe scripture. I preach scripture. I annihilate personal views and feelings. I don't agree with nobody's personal views or feelings. 
I agree with scripture. That's it. Because the author of scripture is coming back for me, not you. Yeah. When I stand before him, yeah. I got to stand before him with that. Yeah. And if I don't warn the wicked to turn from his way, his way. then the blood God is going to lay at my Your hands. hands. I'm telling you right now, I ain't going to have a drop of blood on me. No way. Anyway. For no reason. Wonderful. Wonderful. Get me. Wonderful, wonderful. If you get ordained, then get high-minded. We're going to sit you down. Yeah. If you get ordained, then let the people push you. Then they start giving you titles that you know you don't have. And you don't correct them. That prove you a title lover. That's right. The Bible says, lay not upon me flattering titles. titles. So you that's eager to be up here, do you want to be a help? Or do you just want to be known? Do you want to be a help or you just want praise from people? Do you want to be help or you want to hear the title chiming out there? <laughs> That's right. Elder says, Elder says, Elder says, Elder says. Years ago, Bishop Johnson, when he was living, one of the mothers told me he had a church in Chicago. He bought a theater, sitting about over 5,000 people, and it was packed. And there was an elder who's dead now that some of us remember, Elder Copeland. Mm -hmm. Short, clean man. Man, Copeland stayed clean. And he was younger. He was under Bishop Bessie Johnson. And Johnson had him pastoring the church in Chicago. Copeland was over about 5,000 people or more. And then uh, he got lazy with the crowd. Wouldn't work. Had a crowd buying them cars and everything else, and all of a sudden wouldn't stick to the apostles' teaching. Johnson handled it with such wisdom. He said, Some of the elders say, Well, you gonna put him out? Johnson said, No, I'm I'm not gonna put Minister Copeland out. I'm just gonna change where he's gonna teach. Johnson said, I caught out a coupling into the office and said, Minister, how'd you hear in Detroit? He said, the church in uh, Chicago going to miss you. He said, Bishop, I'm going somewhere? <laughs> he said, yes, I've started a new church in South Carolina, in the woods. <laughs> he said, really, Bishop? Yeah, yeah. How many, how many souls, Bishop? I only got about maybe five people. <laughs> he said, but Bishop, Chicago got 5,000. I said, that's all right. You go down there in the woods. How long, Bishop? Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> long as he was under Johnson. Wow. He was removed from 5,000 mm. to five people. When you get so arrogant, high-minded, where you would think, oh, well, if you remove me, if the people love me. Oh, really? That's the spirit of the devil that's in you. Yeah. You see, ordination also challenges humility. I want to say, would you ordain a man that's not qualified? Yes. I want to say, what? It'll bring out what's in him. That's true. What? That's what Jesus did with Jesus Judas. Did. That's right. By the time a person just don't come out with what's in him until you get him a license. That's right. So I want to say, did you ever did that? Yes. When? The most recent one was Ellis. Yeah. I made him comfortable. Gave him license. That's true. He had an expiration date. Before I gave him that license, Ellis said, you's a king. He's my brother. He's this. I never seen a man like him. Oh, praise God. Yeah. yeah. I wanted more to see what was in him. 
So I thought about when Jesus chose Judas. Yeah. I never told nobody this before. I never told nobody. So I said, you know what? I'm going to ordain him. Because either the real thing is in you or it's not. Or it's not. So now I got to figure out ways to get it out of you. And when I ordained him, my hunch was right. It manifests what was in him. You can have the gift, but if you read your Bible, the apostles laid hands on all the areas of ministry. ministry. You may not think it's something to it. You have no idea how that would transform your speaking talent. Ask Taj. Is Taj even here? He's where? Oh, that's right, he's in the gym. Taj said it blew his mind. What came over him? He said he felt it. Hallelujah. He said he felt the Spirit of God when it came on him. And the church have witnessed his whole teaching yeah. change. Oh, yeah. Ain't no one make it so beautiful? Taj is so humble with it. That's right. None of the branch churches don't you put so much praise on no minister. None. Amen. And you ministers, don't you let them push you too much. They'll push you right off a cliff. That's true. They'll push you and praise you and then write me an evaluation form about you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, push you and praise you, and the same ones are writing an evaluation form about you, begging me to take you out the pulpit. If you don't believe it, I'll take you in my office and show stacks on all of you. Wow. Some of the same ones that wrote me letters about you were some of the same ones that praise you. I got stacks in my office. Been accused of picking on them, singling them out, everything. Mm. All because you preached something and they hit them. And they didn't like it. Wrote me and said, Take him out there, Paul. He's the devil. <laughs> everything that come to church is not church minded. That's right. There's some that want you to fall. That's right. Don't want you to succeed. Amen. Don't let members push you in a position that you're not. Don't do it. They start putting stuff in your head. You start thinking you're bigger than what you are. And then you start disrespecting leadership. That's right. How in the world are you going to be big over a work you didn't even build? Amen. I never saw something so silly in my life. When I had a little half inch by fair half inch false prophet I was training in Alabama years ago. <laughs> That's right. He had the audacity to say, well, if I leave the church, it ain't no more first church. Man, first church exists before he even came on the scene. Jumped out and made himself some preacher with nothing. With nothing. Nothing. If God don't give this assignment to you, you lie on him. Yeah. All right. All right. That's right. Many don't like me because of this stand, and it don't matter. That's right. I'm telling you right now, Pastor Paul say, whoever they seem to be, make of no matter to, matter me. to me. I perceive that God have no respected person. He said, but out of every nation, he that worketh the righteousness is accepted, accepted with, him. with him. You should be able to preach before a thousand and be humble. If you preach before one. That's right. When we went to Jamaica, God sent me there. When I met Gary them, I was already a preacher. That's right. Dan knew them long before I did. 
I was already a preacher. I didn't just become a preacher. I, I was already a preacher. Long before I met any of them in Jamaica. When we got started in Jamaica, we had no more than about uh, eight to ten people. When we got started. That was it. And there was a church that his father used to pastor. And when he first met me, it was at the grave site of his father. And I was battling the elders. At the, at the, at the time of burial. All these elders coming to me, the evangelist this, elder this, bishop this. And I'm asking them, who ordained you? They, all of them was telling me they was called. I said, show me that in here. Mm. Where's that in here? I mean, it was jumping titles and all. And Gary, I didn't know who he was. All I saw this little tall, skinny fellow standing there. My God, who's he? My God, who is he? Praise the Lord. <laughs> We had a burial site. Elder Gale, evangelist this, bishop that. I'm like, wait a minute, where is that in the Bible? That says that office is called and sent directly of God. I mean, we was battling. They threw their hands and walked away. Mm. Amen. I remember when I, when I talked, me and, Ezekiah, me and Hezekiah Thomas, Dan's father, we talked about that. When he came over, he came over uh, with us. Most of you ain't never met him. We had, we, had the came, we had the same conversation about Elder. He said, you must be called and sent by God. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and I asked, man, Elder Thompson was talking one day. And uh, I said, Elder, you, you say you was called and sent by God? Yes, Pastor Jennings, yes. The Lord called me into the ministry. I said, well, what, did he, what did you hear? He said, oh, I, I hear nothing. <laughs> hey, he told the truth. I said, so how did he call you? He said, I, I, I felt as though that I needed to help spread the gospel. And God made a way for me. Spread the gospel. Praise Jesus. <laughs> I said, but the elder is an appointed office. Yeah. Hey, he, he, he was a very humble man. Did not retaliate. Did not get upset. Did not lay me out. We went right to the Bible. He said to me, yeah, you're right. He said, you know, Bishop Johnson, he preached the same thing. Mm. That you got to be ordained. I said, if he preached that, why didn't you follow him? He said, well, where we at now, we, we don't have no apostle. So I said, so y'all freelancing. <laughs> you know, a lot of folks don't believe in apostles now. And they think that office is just like anything else. They read the Bible, but they don't really believe it. Don't believe it. God will bless you. I'm a witness. If you stick to his word. That's right. I'm, I'm telling you, God is my witness. If you don't get exalted and don't get high-minded, you have no idea how God will bless you. God blessed Timothy through Paul. Through Paul. Gaius, Titus, Erascus. God blessed them through Paul. That's right. Joseph, entire master house. God blessed them through Joseph. Joseph. You can't take these offices and just sweep them under the rug. No way. You can't do that and then claim we, we are the doctrine of the apostles. You think this stuff is in there for? Yeah. Whatsoever thing is written is written for our learning. I'm not budging from it, God knows. I believe it because it's written. That's it. All of you that got their calling in your head, the calling in your back, the <laughs> calling in your side, the gut calling, the Charlie horse calling in the thigh, the toothache calling, the calling that make your eye twitch, <laughs> the earache calling, the calling that done put you in five different ministries in two months. Mm. 
you make God look foolish. And all that ain't getting, get it, get an understanding. God have made me a very strict, sound, tough preacher. Amen. And I am not going to move from this. That's as sure as God is my God. Anybody want to get right and be baptized in water this new year? In the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet and get right with God. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, come to the front. All of you that are standing, come on to the front. I want to say, Pastor Jenny, let me understand you right. Do you mean? I don't mean nothing. <laughs> Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. When you go back to your hotel at night or home, get your Bible. Get your Bible. Let's take your personal feelings, take it, and throw it in the washing machine. That's right. Don't dry it. Because it may fluff on you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I understand God's blessings by not deviating from the Bible. And I, I, I seen the windows of heaven open up, and it's still opening. Hallelujah. We are not going to deviate from the Bible. Deviation is a sin. Yeah. Now, I know some of you fellas who had this calling stuff. Some of you ain't coming back. I know. But I ain't moving. That's right. You're not coming back proves you don't believe that Bible. That's right. And don't go telling me, I know what God said to me. God talked through word. that Bible. The scriptures. The word brought me here. <laughs> That's right. The word brought me here. Amen. This, I got the feeling it's time to stop that stuff. I said, oh, apostolic trash. You got the feeling. That's the, that's the, the teachings that come out of these churches. Feelings. Yeah. I deal with Bible, not feeling. I believe the Bible. I don't care nothing about feeling. I want to say you don't preach with love. God is love. The Bible is love. I'm loving. <laughs> Amen. I know some going to second guess now before they go get evaluated. I believe the Bible. That's it. If you think I'm any different than what you see over the air, when I tell you I believe the Bible, you ask anyone that's been around me long period of time, you hmm. think Pastor Jenny's going to get away from that Bible? No. No. Ask him, does a cow smoke crack? <laughs> And give intoxicating milk. That's right, Harris. Nope. That's right. I came out of the so called apostolic church. All that homemade, customized junk that's been going around for years, it damaged men. And it damaged a lot of young men. They've been talking the same stuff for years, 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 years. And then when we come with Bible, you're shocked. The Bible challenge what you really believe. That's right. And if what you believe is not in here, be humble enough to dump it. That's right. If it's not in here, be humble enough, dump it. Can't be a help to yourself nor to the people holding on to it. Look, take it from your brother. I came out the apostolic church. I had to dump so much garbage. When I dumped that garbage, that bootlegging stuff, Amen. and when the acts of the scripture broke up that unlawful liquor, liquor preaching, 
where you get drunk and sell everything. That's right. That's right, Frank. When I threw that stuff overboard, God been blessing every sense. Amen. And God spoke to me, and I heard God's voice. When we was over the air, and I prayed for a telecast, and God gave us to us there in Jamaica. That thing went a long time. Then God spoke to me. Go through the island in person. I will give you more results in person than I gave you on the telecast. I heard that just as plain. I called Brother Gary and told him what the Lord said to me. I said, he said, where are you going to start? I said, I don't care. God told me go through the island. He's going to give me victory every place. And do you know that's what he did? Amen. Every single part of Jamaica. Hey Amen. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not someone who's just talking off the top of their head or no, trying to make no. themselves big. I'm, when I'm telling you that I heard from God. I really heard from God. Yeah. Someone said, God's going to strike you down. No, he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> what God's going to do is stand behind what I'm telling you. That's right. Well, I wouldn't say that. That's right, but I would. <laughs> That's right. A lot of folks don't know what God done to me when he appeared to me. I can tell you over and over and over, but you won't be able to grasp it. No. What the great Jehovah done to me when he appeared before me. I didn't, hallelujah, I didn't only hear his voice, but God of heaven, God of heaven, hallelujah. appeared unto me. Glory Amen. Amen. He was so bright yeah. until I couldn't hardly look at him. I saw a sheep. I looked. Wonderful. Ain't no one gonna tell me nothing opposite from what heaven said. You may not understand why I am like I am, but God understands. There's a woe behind me. Go on to me if I preach not the gospel. That's it. I don't care nothing about nobody's title. Because when you die, your title ain't going to get you in the kingdom. Yeah. It's heaven to hell. Do we understand this? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. It's heaven to hell. So good as having a hundred preachers if only two of them believe the Bible. That's right. What good is it? What good is it, James? They have about 3,000 preachers and three believe the Bible. Right. <laughs> and everything else talking a bunch of trash. Your representation of scripture must be that. Scripture. That's right. I'm not interested in feel good messages. I don't care what people think you should be. That's right. Pastor Jenny should ordain you a bishop. And you respond, I know. Fire! <laughs> You're arrogant. You're self-righteous. You're high-minded. The word of God going to weed you out. <laughs> That's right. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You get some. He keep talking like that. He ain't going to have nobody. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's right. That's different from what God told me. I will never be too hard and be by myself. That's right. Someone say, I don't believe that, but I know that. That's the difference. I know that. Some folk think I'm making this up when I tell them God appeared unto me and God spoke to me. I'm not. I can tell God you told me. God's going to strike you down. No, he ain't. That's right. I can tell heaven. That's right. You told me. You're responsible. You put me here. You spoke to me. Hallelujah. You showed me this. And then told me what to do to make eternity with you. Nobody. 
going to change that book. Absolutely nobody. All of you that say you got a calling, it ain't in here. Throw that mess in the trash. You don't accept my calling? I don't accept nothing but Bible. But the Bible. Did you hear? I mean, how much plainer can I make it? That's right. You can shake my hand tonight and say it was good seeing you. Bye. That's right. On your way out, I'm going to tell you. I accept nothing but Bible. <laughs> Coming or going, you ain't going to change that book. That's right. This book challenged what we really believe. And one of the most difficult things to do is drop long-term beliefs. That's hard. Oh, yeah. It's not in there. Feeling in your gut, in your neck, in your ears. Tossing and turning that night. And, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> sounds in the washing machine, sounds in the dryer. <laughs> Having a car accident. So that after the car accident and I survived, I decided to go preach because I survived the car accident. That's right. It really make it dramatic. I fell, I was doing mountain climbing, I slipped fell and I was dangling off the rope and the rope was just there and I told God, Lord, if you spare me, I was, I, 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 I'll go. <laughs> and then the Coast Guard came to save you. <laughs> this is a hard job. Yes, it is. God ain't never told me that everything is going to be with me. He didn't tell me that. But I have a gospel that won't change. Yeah. Pastor Paul, Paul said, God going to judge all the secrets of men's heart by my gospel. That's right. Calling, go to the Bible. Forget your guts. Well, Pastor Jim, I was down there praying. I said, Lord, if you call me, speak through me. <laughs> <laughs> speak through me again. <laughs> Speak to me again. And then you get up. I got three witnesses. You liar. That's a lie. Mm. After you done, used to be a song in the 60s and 70s like that. And then the music starts. Yeah. That's right. We came out of that era. <laughs> Holiness believes the Bible. Okay. Holiness is built on Bible. That's right. That's what holiness is built on. You doubt Lord, if this is you, speak. <laughs> Lord, I need another witness. <laughs> Another witness. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And then they run to Gideon when he put the fleece out. <laughs> Wet one day, dry the next time. That's a fleece. Your tongue ain't no fleece. <laughs> That's right. Man, you brothers got to consider people here in this teaching like you. They are learning it just like you. That's right. And they ain't going to let you put stuff over on them. They're going to listen, and when that stuff deviates from the Bible, and they start questioning you, and you label them as disrespectful, no, they soul is at stake, That's right. and they ain't going to let you get away with it. <laughs> That's all it is. Amen. This is holiness and sanctification. That's what it is. Holiness. You hear me, Bishop? Holiness and sanctification. Holiness is not freelance feelings. No. I don't blame you brothers that believe all this stuff. I blame this junk you was taught. I came out the same old crazy stuff, too. Taught that stuff. 
Only way I knew better was God. Open oh, hallelujah, my understanding. That's that it. was it. That's right. That I may understand the scripture. When you open my understanding, I was like, man, it ain't like, it ain't like that. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. It's dangerous you go telling some preacher you got a calling and he don't know what calling is and then he throw you in the pulpit. Where's Dave Howard? I thought I saw him around here. Dave Howard. <laughs> no more Holy Ghost than a duck can tap dance. But he came out the same false church I was in. And the preacher put him up. And said he had a calling. And said he had the Holy Ghost. And David didn't have the Holy Ghost. David was up there deliberately jerking and going to some type of tongue. Shang -a -nang -a -nang -a -nang -a -nang -a -nang and then when the preacher would brag about him and we get outside, David would laugh at him. And they you know what David would say? I pulled him, didn't I? <laughs> Am I right, Dave? He fooled him. <laughs> Ford hitting, so help me. Wow. Hitting kept putting him up to preach. Kept putting him up to preach. Come on, he was called. No more called than I'm a crack salesman. <laughs> I remember when I went to David. I said, man, you know you ain't no preacher. And you know you ain't got no Holy Ghost. He said, well, Hen don't know it. <laughs> Get up there, all that. Ah, like in the spirit. Ah, ah, like he's doing martial arts. Ah, ah. This, is, this is all in church. He had my former bishop jumping all out the chair. Preach, boy. Preach. They were like, hey, hey. I'm like, this boy done lost his mind. This is in church. In the church. And you know what makes it so bad? My former pastor said he was an apostle. That man couldn't tell the difference between a man having the Holy Ghost and downright making a sucker out of you. Am I right, Chris? It was me, Deke, Dave, my brother-in-law, Calvin Sutton, Paul Brown, my other brother, Rick, my other brother-in-law, Butch McAlilly. Butch knew he wasn't a preacher. And Hinton deliberately forced them to get in the pulpit. And that thing emotionally and spiritually damaged my brother-in-law. He backslid. I'm telling you the danger of it. Amen. Butch said I'm not a preacher and I don't want to get up there. Hinton didn't pay him no mind. Put him up there. Butch was so embarrassed. And I'm Butch had the Holy Ghost. He left church. Backslid. That's how bad he was injured by a false prophet who threw him in the pulpit. But he himself knew he was not a preacher. My Lord, my Lord. He backslid and been out of church probably almost 50 years. So when I tell you these things, brother, I'm telling you what I have seen with my eyes. Men can damage you by putting you up here and they know you ain't ready. But they just want to look like it's big. We got a lot of ministers. I don't want that mess. That's right. Give me something scriptural and quality. Otherwise, in that, it ain't worth having. Right. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Let us all stand. Come on back tomorrow. Paul said, I say this not to condemn you. And I don't. I can identify with my brothers that came out the apostolic church. I had those same bruises, wounds, injuries. Some survived those injuries. Some backslid like my brother-in-law. And been out there and still out there to this day. And I pray that God will have mercy on him and bring him back to him.
Come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Brothers, our final uh, minister's meeting will be, God willing, at 10 o'clock. Eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the scriptures you have outlined for our learning. You say whatsoever things were written aforetime is written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Everlasting God, our hope is in your word and your word only. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for bringing us into another year with the same gospel. Thank you how you prospered the church for the thousands that are going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We can never thank you enough. We don't have words to express our gratitude for opening up our understanding that we might, hallelujah, that we might understand the scriptures. Help us to keep your words first and foremost. Any of us that struggle with what you have written, give us victory to overcome, laying aside all of our personal feelings and views. For let us look at God. Thank God and look at your word. Hallelujah. Everlasting God, thine word is true. You said, sanctify them through thine truth. Thine word is true. Now we ask you to protect us all as we go back to our separate places. Remember our brothers and sisters that are watching and listening around the world. Them that are in prison, bring peace to their heart and let your Holy Ghost fall even behind the bars. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, them that's in the hospital, watching wherever they are, waiting for surgeries. But bless God, let your healing virtue come. Thank God from heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Come out of heaven. Bless it be God and heal them. God knows that by your power. We thank you tonight for how you thought enough of the church. Put your word in the church. Glory to God, we thank you for the many that eyes you have opened and turn them to the word of God. Keep us and preserve us that we don't deviate at all from your divine precepts. These blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, the most high God. Let every heart say amen.